speed, endurance, desire. For 160 years, Motul has helped engines and drivers go faster, further, and stronger. Tested in the heat of battle, driven with passion, with one aim, to give you superior powertrain protection and performance. Motul. Hungry for SVRA action? Well, the best way to enjoy classic auto racing is with a delicious classic from Mission Foods. Green flag your race-watching snacks with Mission's mouth-watering race day recipes. Try some of our tasty tacos, piled high nachos, fresh chips with guac, and more. So gear up your ride and fuel up those stomachs with delicious Mission Foods. Now that's too fast, too tasty. With creative and flexible tooling solutions for a quick turnaround of your product launch, Three Dimensional Services Group gets things done. We do everything in-house, from reviewing CAD files, design and simulation, machining ideal tooling solutions, laser cutting and metal stamping, complex welded assemblies, as well as injection molding, all to get you parts fast without compromising quality. We take on the most complex jobs and deliver beyond expectations. You've got a business to run, big and heavy products to ship, and customers who need them now. When you've got the right driver and the right equipment, you can bet on a spectacular result. Bennett understands complex logistics and puts the best team, the most time, and the latest technology into every customer relationship. So you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the race. Let us handle the rest. Together, Together we can move anything. Hello and a warm welcome to VIR. It's a beautiful day here for the Big Machine Vodka Spike Coolers T82 Series, the penultimate round of the series. Alongside me, as ever, Scott Goodyear, and we are excited. We have a little bit of potential history in the making. A 15-year-old, yes, you're not kidding me, a 15-year-old could win a really big championship here in the words of Brent Cruz. He's been fantastic all year long he's got 133 point of a lead at the moment and he can take it here and not take it to Coda like last year's finale you know and I agree with you but after watching what happened here this morning in the Formula Regional where we thought Callum Hedge just had to finish and win the championship he didn't finish he had a car breakage so guess what the championship now goes to Coda I always say that the race in the championship isn't over until you've crossed the finish line and you're celebrating. So, yes, we think you'll get it, but there's a lot of racing to go on between now and the end of the race. The only two men that could stop Brent Cruz were Rafa Matos and Thomas Merrill, our current champion. I spoke to Thomas and Rafa uh, during the weekend. Rafa said that uh, he's just going to go for it, and unfortunately he's had a problem in qualifying. He's at the back. That could count him out, but never count out Rafa Matos, as we saw last year. The other point is... I talked to uh, Thomas Merrill. What's he thinking? He said, you know what? I've just got to win. I've just got to keep beating Brent Cruz. And that's the right attitude as a racing driver. And that's the easiest thing to do because sometimes when you're in championship and you just got to finish, your timing is off. You're not getting the corners correctly and everything feels off and you're looking in the mirror. I like that strategy. You just go for it. It's the easiest thing to do. We'll walk you through all the permutations as the race goes on. But the bottom line is, as I say, Thomas Merrill just has to beat Brent Cruz. Or if Brent Cruz has a problem, goes out, and then we go on to Coda, and that's where we finish it all as we did last year. But it's exciting stuff because this young Brent Cruz from this part of the world could be the champion at the end of this race. It's all to play for, and there's others who could be in the mix. Connor Zilic, he's already won in TA. Could he do it again in TA2? And we've also got another Connor. Connor Mosak did the Xfinity last night, and he's back at the back of the grid with Rafa Matos. So there could be some real fireworks. We'll get down to the booth, but first, let's take a short break before we get for this very exciting TA2 race from VIR. Taking on the challenge, moving ahead, 
It's about going further, faster. At Customers Bank, we know that great things happen when you combine the best of technology with a deeply human touch. So we offer a wide range of personal, small business, and commercial banking solutions with outstanding personal service, giving you the edge you need to take on tomorrow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Welcome to the Big Machine Vodka Spike Coolers TA2 Series here at Virginia International Raceway. I'm actually starting in the back of a 34-car field that is bookended by two Connors. Connor Mosack, who is going to be starting here in last place because he was racing an Xfinity race yesterday, is uh, starting in the back, but we know he's fast. Here he comes in that beautiful kind of Tootsie's pink Sherry Strong car. But then Transant TA2 champion Rafa Matos. I'm just not used to seeing you this far back. We spoke a little bit, but why so far back in the grid? Yeah, a bit of an unfortunate incident yesterday. We had a fuel pump failing, but the car was very fast to practice. I think the three-dimensional service group boys did a fantastic job prepping the car, but just uh, we're P1 and P2 every session. So we're, we're hoping not to stay here for, for that long. Yeah, and if you know anything about the TA2 series, just a few years ago, he started in the back at Road America and came blasting through the field. So look out for this big, bright yellow car. Then I'm going to come back and talk to Connor Mosack because, like I said, we're bookended by two different Connors. So, Connor Mosack, man, you, uh, you've had a busy weekend. I saw you here for practice, didn't get to qualify. But I know that uh, you, you did. Uh, you were doing really well in the Xfinity drive last night. But the thing we got to talk about, the Sherry Strong, new car for you. Tell us all about that. Yeah, I had the Sherry Strong foundation on the uh, Xfinity car yesterday. And um, just an honor for us to be able to represent uh, Sherry and, and her legacy and, and also her foundation and raise awareness for, for ovarian cancer. So it's just an honor for us to, to do that. Um, and hopefully we can kind of redeem myself from yesterday. I uh, spent on pit road there with just a few laps to go, and that kind of took us out of contention there. So I think we got a fast car today. We'll uh, probably just follow Rafa here through for a little bit, and then uh, if we can race it out there at the end, then that's what we'll do. We love tracking your career. You know, you were really strong for two seasons here in the TA2 series, but VIR means something kind of special to you, and you kind of have a, a gear to grind here at VIR, don't you? Yeah, this is where I made my first uh, start here a couple years ago, and uh, I feel like we kind of gave away last year's race, so we're going to make up for it today. Nice. So look out for this, uh, would we call this pink or purple, the Sherry Strong car and the yellow car to be moving up through the field of 34 cars. So we've got some unbelievable cars. I kind of walk us through the grid a little bit as we come back here because we've got the talent is thick in the Big Machine Vodka Spike Coolers TA2 series. And it seems like every season it gets thicker and thicker. And now with only two rounds left, this is going to be a crazy race. So we'll just start right here. Barry Bowes. Barry, you know, you've been having a lot of fun with us here in the Big Machine Vodka TA2 Series. Had your first podium this season running the Accio Data car here with Blaze. How's it feel? Car feels fantastic. We showed up beginning of the weekend. We had a car that didn't work, made some poor choices in setup, lost the transmission in test one, and things have just gotten better and better and better. I'm really excited about this car for the start of this race. We've got a good, strong car that's going to last, and I expect to be moving up. Now, usually, one of the drivers you don't want to have in your mirror is Misha Goigberg. But you guys are teammates, right? So you're pretty comfortable with that? He's only punted me once this weekend, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little teammate love tap. Is that what that was? So Misha Goikberg back there in the number 10. And then uh, Darren Mock. Where is he? Darren. doing we're talking to Adrian Lostowski. Who will get together then, guys? So Adrian Lostowski here, Darren Mock. What are you guys talking about? You doing a little pre-planning? Yeah, we're just, you know, just trying to see how this race will go. I think it'll be a wild one for sure. Um, I think we have a really fast 51 a and uh, Mustang. I just got to do a little better job driving it. So um, I think we got a good piece. Nice. How about you? Yeah, we're just talking. Um, you know, this, this race is going to be interesting. It's 75 minutes. There's a lot of grass. I think a lot of cars are going to be coming off. I think the goal here is to have a good car with 30 minutes to go. Um, we have a really good Hawk Performance uh, Ford Mustang this weekend. Um, 
we're definitely expecting an outbreak, everybody. Um, we are, we're always excelling on the braking. Not only that Hawks are sponsor, but we definitely are good on the braking. And um, we're just talking with Darren, like some spots feel like our car's better, some spots they're better, you know, so it'll make it interesting during the race. Now, Darren, what is this hat? You always come with the coolest stuff. I love, you got to get a close up of this hat. Look for the camera. Out yonder, just get there. I love it. Nice job. And then we got it. So since that, this is what I mean. You got to look at his, who his sponsor is, GilreathFarms.com. Not many people have a big Angus cow or bull right there on the side of their car. So we love that. Having, having Darren Mock out here. Here we go. Here's a better, here's a better view of that. Look at that. That's a first for me. I don't know if that's a first for motorsports. So we're going to move up to the front. So here's Adrian Lostowski here. Always super fast talking about Hawk. Thomas Annunziata, we've talked about him with the Nerd Focus, the best eyebrows in motorsports. We've got Boris said Jr. there, Boris said Sr., Boris said getting into the car. Look out for Dylan McAvern. Dylan McAvern, always really fast here, and he's been fast in another car with the SVRA group this weekend, so he's had a lot of time. Kayla Bacon really stepping up the the. The process and the car count here this year, you've kind of, uh, I saw you have a B car now, so you're really getting fast in TA2 series. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, I mean, we're starting to figure it out. You know, uh, at the beginning of this year, we kind of struggled a fair bit just to figure out what worked for us, you know. But uh, just a few past races we've done, you know, we've really started to figure it out, step it up. The guys are working really hard. Um, you know, they're really doing great. So we'll see what we can do today. Nice, and you can't miss Caleb Bacon and the number 18 car. It really shows up. Tyler Casera, very good at VIR, back in the series. Nice job. You. you were telling me just a couple weeks ago you were working on this, but we know you're fast here. So uh, you won just a couple of years ago, and now what's your expectations here in this Nitro car? Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, you know, just got to get through the first couple of laps. Um, honestly, still shaking the rust off, so... Uh, really just trying to kind of figure out what I have in the race and see where we're at relative to these guys and hopefully go to the front. Nice. Go to the front. Good good luck with that, Tyler Casera. Nathan Hearn, who obviously new track to him, and he says he's trying to figure this track out but hasn't gotten as many laps as he wanted to. Austin Green from the area, always really fast, doing really, really well in the points. Got to point out Adam Andretti's beautiful car here. The number 41 ultimate headers car. Look for Adam Andretti to move his way through the field. Always really fast. Got a little bit of a donut there. Oh, that's old. Is that for, oh, that's old? Oh, that's old. Yeah, no, that's old like the driver. Yeah, that, that, that's been there for, uh, that was there since actually Watkins Glen when we had the big oil down in practice and okay. had a little bit of a uh, little bit of Barry Bowes there. But we're here at VIR and, and it's a beautiful day and a wonderful weekend and the fans are here and, and you're watching at home and we're just really, really blessed to be here with this ultimate headers. Chevrolet Camaro. Nice. I love it. Adam, good luck. Way to come out here. Now, here we go. Last year's Big Machine Vodka TA2 Series winner, Thomas Merrill, starting in fourth place, which is a little bit crazy for Thomas Merrill. Then he's got these very tough drivers ahead of him. Here's two of them right here. Let's hear. We'll just get together because I know you guys have been doing this since you were like five years old together, but Brent Cruz, could clinch the championship this weekend starting third what's your strategy going into this yeah i think the goal is to just stay up front and, and see what we can do obviously go for the win um and then the championship hopefully that comes along with it would be super nice uh, me and connor are not only battling on the racetrack but we're also battling each other in fantasy right now so that's that's another priority <laughs> nice i love it now connor looking for the sweep of the weekend how's that feel yeah, looking for the sweep in not only fantasy, but on the racetrack as well. So, uh, you know, I got the TA win yesterday, and, um, you know, hopefully I'll be able to back that up with the TA2 win with my Silver Hair Racing guys. And, uh, you know, we've had a really fast car this weekend in, in both classes, and uh, we capitalized on it in the TA race. Now I just got to do my job in this one. Nice. And how about that for priorities? Right before the race starts, they've got their phones out looking at their fantasy football stuff. Now, speaking of Big Machine Vodka, Jade, I believe this is the highest you've qualified in the Big Machine Vodka Spike Coolers TA2 Series. This has got to feel really good. Yeah, we guys brought a great car this week, and they've been working really hard. And hopefully we can go out and put on a hell of a show with our Big Machine Spike Coolers number 48 Mustang here and go have some fun. Nice. And, and you've got to... The two top young guns between you. You're like in a young gun sandwich. Any strategies for going into... Big Machine Vodka Spike Coolers Turn 1. 
nah, we're going to run our own race. These kids are driving great, and we're just going to go out and execute the best we can and see what we got, see if we got anything for them. Nice. I love it. Well, that's Jade Buford there. And Oh, so, yeah, sorry about that. I'm losing my train of thought here. So, look at this. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to point out our Motul Pole Award. The fifth one of the season, and actually he won the, broke the record for being the youngest Pole Award winner here just a few years ago, but his fifth Motul Pole Award. So, Connor, that's got to feel pretty good. Yeah, it's a testament to our fast cars we've had this year, especially the, you know, the last seven, eight races we've been, I feel like, the fastest car at a lot of the races. So, uh, you know, hopefully we can get some more wins and, and you know, make those pull awards count. But, uh, you know, it feels good to have those. Nice. I love it. Well, Connor Zilich, congratulations. I'm looking for that sweep this weekend. No pressure. But, ladies and gentlemen, Bill Knox is here to deliver us our invocation. So if you can take off your hats and bow your heads, please. If you'll join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come to you in prayer, Father, we ask that you hold all the drivers in your almighty hands, Father, that you keep them all patient for this entire race, and most of all, that you bring all of them home safely. And Father, we ask also that you hold the first responders and the police in your almighty hands, Father, as they continue to do their jobs and protect us. And Father, we ask that you bless and keep our military which allows us to do this thing that we truly do love and in this country that we love. In your son's most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bill Knox, thank you so much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special treat. Carrie Dallas is here to deliver the national anthem. And speaking to Connie, she says she has a beautiful voice. So, Carrie, take the mic. Take it away. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming at the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet or the land of the free and the Carrie, Dallas, absolutely beautiful. Thanks. Scott and Sandy, I hope that you were watching that and paying attention because we've got some talent here at Virginia International Raceway. But, Jonathan, I'm going to send it to you for the full grid of this fantastic cars in the TA2 series. Thank you, Ben. As ever, a really interesting insight to what is a cracking setup for a penultimate round to the 23-23 championship. Connor Zilich in pole position. Jay Buford, his best qualifying position. Scott Borchetta will be happy with that. Brent Cruz, can he win the championship? Alongside him, Thomas Merrill. It doesn't get any tougher, does it? Austin Green and Nathan Hearn on row three. Then Tyler Casera. Great to have him back, but with Nitro Motorsports, he always goes well. He had a win here just a couple of years ago. Caleb Bacon alongside him. Dylan McAvern, one in IMSA here, uh, is on row five. And Boris said Jr., probably the first time he's raced in TA2 at this particular track. But I know he's raced here before. And Inciata and Los Toski on row six. Then Mock and Bose on row seven. Then it's Misha Goikberg and Keith Project, two of our established drivers 
And then Josh Sarge learning his way, as is Thad Moffitt. First season for Thad, and he has been in the top five in the last few races. Adam Andretti for ultimate headers. He won here back in 2014 for the same team, Jim Gallagher, uh, on row 10. Then a little further down, it's Luke Rumberg. Chris Leesfield, the kind of ringer, he comes in for these races and uh, is always going well. New man, local man, David Hodge, getting his first run. And then, I wouldn't call him an old man, but he has got the Iron Man tag. Tom Sheerhan's got more races under his belt than anybody. Kale Phillips uh, on row 13 and Al Rowland uh, on alongside him. Then it's Ty Young and Patrick Paul. Lee Saunders, our SGT current champion three times over, said, you know what? I'm going to try this TA2 Slark. And here he comes and he's alongside uh, Las Vegas' uh, Michelle Abate. She's got her tag off. She's wearing the ankle bracelet. And I'm talking about her ankle injury, nothing else. And uh, she's going to be uh, going for it. Matt Gray and William Moore. But look at this story. Rafa Matos, two-time champion. Connor Mosak learned his teeth cut his teeth here in Trans Am, is now a Xfinity star, raced in Charlotte last night on the Oval, comes back to do a very special Sherry Strong M1 race cars team, Scott Lagacy Racing. I'm delight delighted to have him back here, but it just shows what Trans Am means. Even though he's now on to bigger and better in many ways, Connor Mosak loves Trans Am Racing, and he's done several already this season. Let's get ready. Jay Buford in the colours of Big Machine Vodka. And, of course, coming in for Scott Borchetta, injured at Road Atlanta. And he's gradually got better and better. He had a good result at Detroit. And since then, he's just got uh, more and more consistent. But this is his best qualifying. I want to introduce our little group here in the booth. And I'm delighted to welcome, obviously, Scott Goodyear. But also a man who had a good result here last year and knows the VIR tra track. Give him a ride, somebody, Evan Slater. He's an up-and-coming star, just like Connor Zilich and Brent Cruz, but he hasn't got a ride for the moment. Uh, Evan, good to have you on board here. VIR, big challenge. Yeah, thanks for having me. This track is super exciting. I mean, this is a great track. I think it's personally my favorite track in, in the country. I think commonly it's ranked one or two. So it's technical, it's fast, it's flowing. It's just a great track to race at. A lot of good passing opportunities, a lot of high-speed corners, a lot of tight turns where you can get a good pass in. So it's really... It's really an exciting track, and I'm looking forward to this race. Scott Goodyear, you're a man who's dealt with pressure. You've done the 500 a bunch of times, and that has got to be the most powerful, pressureful race in the world. What's going through Brent Cruz's young 15-year-old mind? Or because he's so young, is he unfettered? You know, actually, when you asked that, we were just sitting here chatting before, and I, I looked at our guest, and I said, how old are you? He goes, 17. I'm going, I hadn't even started driving cars <laughs> until I was 20, so it shows you how this has all changed. But at 15, you know, I, I'm not sure, do you absorb it all, or at 15 years of age, or are you just driving the race car? You it's very it hard to say. And, you know, maybe you don't, but, I mean, everybody's starting so young today, but the key thing that we said, you know, earlier on is that uh, you expect everything to be fine. We just had a race earlier today in the series that I operate, and um, we thought that the guy in FR was going to win the championship mm -hmm. and he had a mechanical yeah. and so now he's got to wait to Coda and you understand what that's like we've got four weeks to wait so you know you hope that this all happens for Brent today but then if it doesn't you've got that long waiting game and then you never know what's going to go on I mean yeah. it's difficult I mean waiting is really what all the race car drivers hate so Brent Cruz I know he really wants to get it secured this weekend because you really don't have to, have to deal with those four weeks of waiting like the uh, intensity of just dealing with that so he's really trying to secure it this weekend I believe if I'm correct he needs to get a top six for him to secure the championship no matter where Thomas Merrill who's number correct. two in the yeah. points finish that's how we see it so. at the moment that could change as the race goes on and obviously as I said at the top, you know, really, Merrill's uh, focus, he said, I'm not even looking at the points, he said to me. He said, I just need to beat Brent Cruz. I just need to win. Otherwise, it's all over. And that's, you know, if you, if you, if you approach it that way, it's a little bit easier than worrying about the numbers. <laughs> yeah, just focus on what you can control, not worry about all the numbers. Just go. focus on doing the best you can, driving the car. That's one thing I really work on when I'm driving. Just focus on what you can do, and what you can do is drive. All right, let's get those famous words done here at VIR. Let's once again join Ben Sissel. Yeah, thank you, Jonathan. I am here, and it's an honor to be here with a Trans Am legend, Lynn St. James. Welcome back to the series. But this weekend's kind of been all about women and motorsports. Lynn, tell us a little bit about that. 
Well, Women in Motorsports was founded just about a year and a half ago, and we're really about celebrating all the successful women in the sport, using them as role models so they can tell their stories, to be able to let, you know, if you can see it, you can be it. So if you want to become the president of a racetrack, like Connie Nyholm, Nyholm is here at VIR or anything, we want to be able to really just let people know that motorsports wants you. We, we want to grow the sport. We want women in it. Nice. That is exactly correct. And you'll see here we have a lot of women in motorsports working with us and on the cruise. But, Lynn, I'm going to give you the mic. Deliver the most famous words in motorsports. Take it away. Drivers, start your engines. Beautifully done. And no better person than the great Lynn St. James. She is such a bubbly character. And even though she's been around racetracks all her life, I could see her yesterday uh, just absolutely chomping at the bit to get in any kind of car she could. She does historics. She does any form of racing. I think she's got something like 10 national championships, if not more. She's won at Daytona for 24 hours and Sebring 12 hours. She's done Le Mans. She's done the Nürburgring. She's done it all. And she's done, more importantly, so much for women in motorsport and there's a lot to be said about what her and her project of encouraging women into motorsport are specifically here in the US uh, and I ha hand my hat off to her. It's long, long overdue and I'm delighted to see a proliferation now of women in motorsport, not just in the cars but outside the cars and in engineering uh, and in uh, mechanicing as well so it's great to see but let's get back down to the action by the way shout out to Michelle Obate our only female in this particular race uh, I mentioned earlier that she uh, during the grid she uh, had an ankle injury earlier in the year she's been racing with a brace on that ankle which can't be very comfortable and I said have you got a story for me this weekend she said tell the world I've taken it off I'm not going to be racing with the bra bracelet which is good because that's going to give her a lot of uh, confidence for sure Let's take a look, closer look at this track. And Scott, I'm going to turn to you here. You know this track well, and you certainly know what these guys are going to do. But it's a long and fast track. You know, on the top speeds of over 160 miles an hour, you know, and I've been around here in road cars and else's like single seater stuff. But, you know, I'm going to turn to the expert here because the weight of these cars, I mean, up and down throughout the hills, I mean, brakes are a concern going around this racetrack. Yeah, these cars, these TA2 cars are historically known to be under, like, they have a small brake package on them. So the brakes are not great. So you have to worry about overheating them. And and then obviously you can't just slow down that fast. So the hills, I wouldn't say affect them too much. I mean, sometimes like coming up through the S's, the car will get really light, even lift a few wheels in the air. But um, yeah, the brakes aren't too effective. And what I love about this is that these things have raw horsepower. You know, our single oh, yeah. seaters have downforce and you've got grip. You guys just have your foot to the pedal and spin the tires and you want. It's, re it's really, really cool. Well, there you see it. And you can see the two big long straights, one out of customer bank corner and then the other down the main straight past our commentary position. We'll be on board with the big machine vodka spike coolers of number 48 Jay Buford and starting in his best ever start of second place. And let's not count out because everybody wants to make a name. We're talking about Brent Cruz and Connor Zillage and Connor Mosak. Sure, those are the big headline stories. But how about Buford taking a win? Would that be a possibility? He'd love to do that and finish off his year in a high. He is a Spinity man at heart, but of course he's come here to help Scott Borchetta in his quest, he did some driver coaching for Scott last year uh, during Nashville and uh, since then when Scott got injured uh, he's taken over the reins. We'll be on board with the three dimensional services group Ford Mustang of Austin Green, the 21 year old, 22 year old excuse me, uh, whose father of course David, uh, an Xfinity champion in his own right but this man making his name and what a season it's been, never easy to race against a two time champion like Rafa Matos uh, and a whole uh, host of other young drivers. Boris Said Jr. also coming into the team. And Adam Andretti has driven for this team in the past. Doug Peterson's team. Nathan Hearn, what a sensation. Australian champion and Formula 5000 champion over there. Came into the championship this time last year at Cota. Got a fourth place there and said, you know what, I fancy this. And uh, so he's dropped Trans Am in Australia where he'd already won. And now he's here fighting his way against the best. Tenth of the championship at the moment. He would say he's not happy with his year because he's been so close to some bigger results. But he is on the grid in a good position. Barry Bowes has had a sensational year. We'll be on board with him. And the ASIO data on board. The man from Texas has had one of his best seasons, including a podium at uh, Detroit. And watch out for the number 32. Loves his racing for sure. 
Now we see our first glimpse of that long, long back straight. We'll also be on board with the one guy. I'm glad we are in third in the championship on 826 points. But he had a problem in qualifying, didn't get to qualify. We think it was a fuel problem, but he is going to be right at the back. But we're going to be on board with him. The three-dimensional services group, Ford Mustang, Rafa Matos, a two-time champion of Trans Am. And he loves racing here. He's had a win here, and his results here have led him to those championships uh, in the past. And even though he's at the back, you never count him out. Adrian Lostowski will be on board with him in the Hawk Performance on board. Adrian's had a great season so far, just coming into Trans Am in the last couple of seasons, but really now got his head round it. And previous winners include last year Brent Cruz, that bodes well. Rafa Matos, as I said, 2021. Mike Skeen, always good around here. So there's plenty to play for. No Mike Skeen this weekend, but Rafa Matos and Conor Mosak. We're really looking forward to seeing them come through. And how far do you think they can get, guys? Well, you know, I got to think that uh, for me, anytime I've had to start at the back is a lot of fun because you really are aggressive, but you can't be too aggressive where you go and take yourself and somebody else out. You know, for me, I only drove these cars twice in a Trans Am, and they're so much different than what I'm used to. But it means so much weight, you get aggressive, and then all of a sudden you just take that too much weight of a car and you slide off the road. So, I mean, for these guys here now, aggressiveness, but I mean, you know, the tires going to play a big part in this, do you think? Yeah, I mean, you have to be aggressive, especially when you're in Rafa or Connor Mosak's position. You have to be aggressive to get up through that field. This Pirelli tire is really good, but it doesn't like to be like you can't slide it around the whole time. So it's a cooler day out here today, which will play, which will help them a lot. But um, if he's too aggressive, he will overheat his tires and end up just losing a lot of pace. So I think he needs to manage that fine line between aggression to get past these guys up front, or get past these guys so he can get up front, and then um, not being too aggressive so he can have the tires in the end. And Evan, where do you make those moves if you are in that aggressive move? I've seen Rafa at uh, Road Atlanta, for example, make moves that I never thought were possible, but what about here? I mean, here it depends on like the kind of person you're passing, obviously. So some of the slower guys in the back, you can make moves in more like unpredictable, not unpredictable, but like unexpected places, yeah. like in the more uh, slower and not as good passing zones. But when you're passing these fast guys up front, you really have to be deliberate on it. And it's normally going to be hard on the brakes, so in the hard braking zones, going into turn one, going into turn four, going into oak tree corner you can stick it in on the inside there and then at the end of straight going into turn 14 so those are the main good passing zones here but um that's for the fast people when you're when you're passing somebody that's slower on pace than you are you can do it in more uh unethical ways i guess and yeah. especially at the beginning though you got to need to make sure that they see you in the mirror that you go up beside them and present yourself just don't sort of surprise them and they close the door on you then you know it's a body work damage or something on the car and then you're here to try and be able to hunt way to the front so that's also I think something that you sort of have to watch now everybody in the pack knows that these fast guys are kind of come from the back so they're you know they got a little bit of information there that you can tell sometimes the teams tell you hey you know number 88 is behind he's starting to work his way up through I mean that's the sort of stuff that you have to sort of watch to see what happens as you can see Brett Cruz leads the championship by 133 points Thomas Merrill must strike today if he's going to stay with him and keep the championship alive Rafa Matos starts from the back but that's an opportunity for both Zilic and Merrill, uh, and a real tragedy for him yesterday. We watched the 88 uh, being taken off the grid uh, after qualifying, and that's a real shame for him. And then Nathan Hearn and Thad Moffat, what a year it's turned out. Thad Moffat, remember, is the grandson of Richard Petty, and I hate to keep going to talk about that. It's like, I just, I don't, I want him to be his own man, and he is, but to, uh, proving to be just that because his season has been so far, so far brilliant. We're going to be on board with Nathan Hearn as well in the Q3 racing Ford Mustang. It's been a sensational year for the Australian. Really learned his craft here in what is a very different car, different tyres from the Australian Trans Am car. So he's had to learn quick. And remember, he's coming to every track new. And I, that's what's really impressed me is that he's taken uh, to these tracks brilliantly. There's Jay Buford, there's Connor Zilic. Zilic, what a weekend! Let me just re-emphasize, if you've just joined us, Connor Zilic, 17 years of age, uh, driving with sponsorship from GM. He's a GM factory driver, effectively, and uh, they put him into TA. He gave them the present of pole and a win in TA. That's the big 850 brake horsepower. These are limited to 550 and Zilic is capable of winning in these two but he would be the first man in Trans Am if he could pull it off today and win both races on the weekend. Let's see then how we go here for our penultimate round of the 2023 season. Let's go racing folks, muscle cars at its finest. Away they go and they roar into action. 
down towards the big machine vodka. Spike Cool has turned one for the first time, and it is Connor Zilich, Jake Buford on the outside. Cruz goes to the inside, and Thomas Merrill is going to try to go high and wide. Nathan Hearn right behind him. The 26, keep an eye on him. Everybody cleanly through as we go on board with Austin Green. He's right there in the mix, uh, but through goes the 26 of Thomas Merrill as they go into turn two. Good start, good clean start. Merrill needs to stay out of trouble, but he needs to be aggressive. As Evan Slater was saying, you've got to be aggressive with these cars, and you've got to get it right first time. Long way to go, 100 miles and 30 laps, but a good clean start, guys. I was surprised in turn one, to be honest with you, because so many cars going to that tight space, but from what we've seen in our single-seater series today, actually turn one's not been that much of a problem, so nice to see that. This always amazes me, just so much horsepower here going through these this and this area here, I mean, you've got the lower the S's and the higher S's and what have you. It just seems like a lot of work with these race cars and you're carrying all that weight. So I know that you're used to it. I always find whenever time I get into a sedan, I feel like I'm driving a big bus. Yeah, and I mean, it's a ton of fun. I love it when you're in the big heavy cars because they kind of, they do their own thing, but when you can get it to do what you want, they're always going to do like what the car kind of wants, like when you hit a bump or something, because they're so big and heavy. But when you can really control the beast, it's just it's a ton of fun. Like going up through those S's, you're flying at like over 150 miles an hour through there, flat out. It's just it's just amazing. So it's great having you in the booth because I can see with a smile on your face how much you want to be back in there. He, he's sitting there almost great, driving the car, isn't he? he? Is That's almost what I like. Yeah. The car. <laughs> but when does the car feel at its optimal? I mean, you just started the race. You're warming up tires. You're fighting with everybody. But when do you real feel really comfortable? Jay Buford making Look a move that. on Cruz. Look at this. Oh, yeah. or, Cruz, or is it? bit by bit the other way around it is because Cruz was making a move on Buford and Merrill's right there he'll pick up the pieces and this is a championship right on the line Merrill right there with him Austin Green doing the job for three-dimensional services but boy this is tight and scary almost it's too tight yeah, really close. I mean, you can see Thomas Merrill right on the back of Cruz. That's a super important position right in early in the race. He's going for He's going it. around the outside. Oh, side by side, our championship contenders. Oh, they're almost touching. Merrill's got the better line now, but Cruz closes the door. That's great clean racing. Well, that's trust, folks. Absolutely. Nathan Hearn will ready uh, behind them, ready to go if they make a mistake. That smart move by the Australian. He knows exactly what's at stake, and he doesn't really want to get involved, but he wants to get... Uh, into the scene where he can be in third position. Green now on board with him uh, as they head through the stake for the second time, the Optima Factory stake. And look at the lead that Connor Zillage has built already, folks. Great stuff by the young 17-year-old from just down the road here in North Carolina, his home race. He got a pole position here. Uh, a couple of years ago, from there on in, we've all stood up and watched Connor Zilic make his way in this championship. You know, Johnny, you said it before. I mean, I've been paying attention to this throughout the whole year, and obviously we talked about the Scott Borchetta's accident, you know, back at Road Atlanta. But, I mean, Jay Buford, man, he has wow. really done a really great good. job this year to be where he's at now and taking the reins of that program and then improving all the way through. I mean, this is really impressive. Very impressive indeed. No question about it. So let's just look at the positions then. Zillich, Buford, Cruz, Merrill still fourth. Ah, what's happened here? Into the pits comes. I think that's Rafa. Rafa. Oh, no. Oh, no. It looks like he ripped off the front splitter. They're, they're taking off the, uh, the lower part of the front bumper, well, this, so I wonder if he had contact or an off track. This reminds me of Coda last front. year. This is exactly what happened. Bit by bit, they unwound the car, and he is going to go with half a car out of the pits, and now he's just going to make sure that nothing else falls off it. It looks as though he's had some contact yet. Oh, this oh, yeah. is just exactly like Coda last year. Uh, half a car for Rafa Matos. Well, it gets him air through the uh, <laughs> through the engine this way, but that's not the way you want to go racing. Yeah, that's all definitely the, the feel of the car is going to feel awful. Yeah, so the car is going to feel bad because you have like a bad aerodynamic situation. But also, I saw they don't have the air filter on, so it's just the air intake is just sucking right in from the open air. So the motor, the ECU, can detect that, and it really doesn't like that. So it ends up cutting power. But it also it opens the opportunity to suck in like a bunch of grass and stuff and blow up the motor if everything goes wrong. Merrill's got past. He's got past Brake Cruz. Cruz won't like that. Nathan Hearn wants to pay the game too, and that is very important. Oh, Matos still out, and look, here comes Merrill, the champion. They went to the wire last year on a countback, and Matos was in a similar position with a broken car, and Merrill just stayed out there, and when it got to the end, we did a countback, and Merrill got it on that countback, which is incredible to win a championship that way. We felt for Matos that day, and we're feeling for him again this weekend because he started at the back, but obviously something's gone wrong. Looks as though he's probably come together with somebody else while trying to overtake. He's doing the right thing, which is staying out of the lead battle. 
Uh, but sadly, Rafa Matos, it looks as though he's going to be out of the fight for the title. Yeah, I mean, that's what we were talking about earlier, the balance between aggression and just keeping it safe. It seems like he played it a little too aggressive, and uh, it's going to end up biting him. And then Brent Cruz to add Igmini to irony as just... Oh, Brent, oh, Brent Cruz! Cruz. Just as I say that, I cannot believe! Just as we were on board with Rafa Matos, Brent Cruz was going past, the engine was cutting, as Evan just described, and he wasn't under power, and here comes... It looked like Brent Cruz had a brake issue. I mean, it looked like he locked up a brake and it went straight in. This. He came in so fast, I wonder if he had maybe a rear brake failure or something like that. Well, it, now it suddenly like this weird. situation for Rafa Matos looks like the smartest thing he could possibly have done, which is to get out there with a spluttering half car and keep going. Now he's just got to finish the race. He's going to get points if he can finish yeah. because it looks to me as though Brent Cruz has gone straight into the tire wall, folks. Yeah, so and it looked like he went in pretty hard, so I don't know if they're going to be able to get that car out and keep it running. I don't know. So wow! A replica of what we just had, because as you know, we had our Formula Regional yeah. race with our champion who just had to finish a little bit earlier. The race just before this one here had a mechanical, and we thought he was going to wrap the championship up. And then, wow, we're having two in one day. When we said in the open, it's never over until it's over. I mean, this is the situation. This is amazing. So we're under caution, as you can imagine. And everything slows down again, and obviously we will take a look at that, but we want to make sure, first and foremost, that Brent Cruz is A-OK, -okay, because that was a heavy hit. Uh, so let, let's just think about this, Evan. He's coming down the back straight, 170 miles an hour. Those uh, tire wall is on the right. And as we saw him go past Rafa Battles, we were on board with him at the time, there was like a puff of smoke, not oil smoke person. It looked like he locked up a brake. So what, I think, exactly what I think happened is he had a brake failure. So you can have like a lot of different types of brake failures. You can have a front brake failure, rear brake failure, or total brake failure. So I think he looked like he locked up a tire, So which makes me believe that he had like half of the system fail. So it's either the front failed or the back failed. So I don't know yet, but that's what it looks like to me if I had to guess. Or maybe the throttle stuck. You never know. I mean, there's a lot of different variables and factors that could have caused that. But um, yeah, we just hope he's okay at this point. Wow, I'm glad you're here. Yeah. <laughs> Good intel. And uh, Scott, from your eagle eye as a race director, what? tell me the procedure first and foremost. Well, I think that from what uh, we just described right now, I did I think exactly that. I mean, it was a little bit surprising. It makes you wonder if maybe there's some oil on the track. I sort of thought maybe it was Rafa's car maybe putting something down after coming in and having all the work done on it. I mean, you just don't really know. And then, uh, as, as we say there, you just got to make sure that uh, Rafa or Brent Cruz is actually fine. So weird scenario and very difficult for him. Well, thanks, Scott. Goodyear and Evan Slater, they're going to give us the insight. We're under caution here at VIR on the penultimate round. We're going to take a short break. But what I can tell you is our championship leader has gone out of the race in the very opening salvos of it. Join us after this. Presented by Pirelli, the Sports Car Vintage Racing Association, International GT, FR Americas, and F4 US Championship. Saturday, you can take part in the Haggerty Cars and Caffeine Car Show with Parade Lab. You do not want to miss the Mission Foods Austin Speed Tour, November 3rd through the 5th. Children 12 and under are free. For tickets, simply go to speedtour.net. Well, welcome back. I'm here with Nick Tucker with a sad face on Nick. I know you're talking to Brent Cruz. He could have clinched the championship here this weekend. What happened out there? Cut down a tire and got in the fence. What's the driver saying on the radio? Yeah, just not much, just stuck. So I don't know. Not a lot of information other than we cut a tire. It is very rare. This hasn't happened. We don't talk that much because it's very rare for Brent Cruz to be out of the race, and we were talking about uh, the things that can happen in racing, and this is just kind of the, the bitter pill sometimes of motorsports, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a real shame, but uh, we'll take it to uh, Coda and do our best. Nice, yeah, exactly. It was decided at Circuit of the Americas last year in the last round, and 
Maybe this year the championship will be decided at Circuit of the Americas the same way. Jonathan, Scott, Evan, back up to you in the booth. Great stuff, Ben, yeah, and I can confirm that we have heard that Brent Cruz is okay. Obviously, he's going to be shaken up, but uh, that means we can show you now a little bit about what happened. And Evan and Scott, I'm going to le let you see what you see. You know much better than I do. Well, we talked about this, you know, just during that break there. I mean, the tire barriers are there, and these cars are very strong cars, and the drivers are well protected for you guys having the side there. But just watch here what goes on. I mean, just locks up the wheel, and it goes forward, and then the slide off. So, you know, about 160, 62 miles an hour, I think it is. And, and luckily, the heat did get the car to slow down. But, and you can see how much those tire barriers actually move. So, still a very hard hit. Yeah, definitely a hard hit. And it seems like there's a second car that went yeah. in there, too. So it must have been, well, here's what I expect. I bet Rafa Matos with that damaged car was throwing off some debris, and I bet the guys, right as they passed it, ran over something from his car and cut down some tires. Well, we're back on board with Jay Buford in second, Buford in second place, and he's behind, of course, Connor Zilic. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, the, the nice thing from the drone is that you saw how much he was able to slow the car down. I mentioned that it's 170 miles an hour, uh, not, if not plus, coming into there. Uh, and um, he was able to slow the car down. But it did look like uh, cut tire, or, or, or as, as, they said, as they said, yeah. Yeah, I guess out of the uh, the possibilities, that's the, that's the best factor because or the best uh, outcome because um, when you cut down a tire, you only cut down once. So you still have three other tires to break and slow right. the car down. So he was able to obviously not slow it down enough to keep it on the track, but slow it down enough so it wasn't a massive impact. And this, this tra track is called what they call FIA certified, which is the type of track that we go, obviously, with our series. So all the best safety stuff is there as far as the tire barriers are concerned and absorb the, the impact from the drivers come and hit it. So that's the nice thing when you come to these high-grade level tracks that, because the FIA does such a great job that oversees, obviously, F1, F2, F3, and F4. So uh, thankfully for that, you can see uh, how the tire barriers are there, and they usually bundle them up and put a... Uh, put some uh, great material behind it just to absorb it so we'll have to see if this uh, tire wall needs to be repaired a little bit but uh, everything did its job well sadly it's Tyler Casera a former winner here at VIR and coming back for his first run um, and he is the other car that was involved in that incident yeah that's really gutting for him because he's been out of a car all year so this is his first race in uh, I think it's close to 11 months so he's really he was really excited to get back for this one so, I mean, it really sucks to go out in a mechanical failure that's not his fault at all. Okay, and we welcome our MAV viewers as well on MAV TV. We are slightly late in getting to you uh, after a technical issue, but uh, we are live, and boy, the drama is thick and furious. Let's go on board with Nathan Hearn. If you remember, Nathan Hearn, the Australian in the 29 Cube 3 on board, was giving us great pictures of that battle between Brent Cruz. And so here is Nathan Hearn. There is Brent Cruz. That's Rafa Matos. He's going past Rafa. So too, Nathan. And here's the incident. You know, almost looks like he, the tire went before he got in the brakes. Did you see that? There was a puff of something originally at the very beginning, and then he seemed to get his foot on the brakes. So to your point, I bet you he ran over something. That's a good, good, good yeah. insight there. So, drama indeed. Uh, so let's just catch you up, Mav. Um, we've lost our championship leader in Brent Cruz, who was about to wrap it all up. And that means that Merrill, our current champion, and we've also lost our two-time champion, Rafa Matos. And it's only Merrill and Rafa Matos that can stop Brent Cruz. But as you can see, that car is pretty depleted. Uh, the front end gone, and uh, I don't think Rafa's going anywhere else in the rest of the day. And of course, that means we are now going on. And uh, Rafa's out the car already, uh, so we'll probably get down and hear from him, or at least from the team. Uh, but now there is one. In other words, Merrill is the only man who uh, is in championship contention who's still in this race at VIR. Uh, and Merrill, of all people, knows just exactly what consistency means, having won the title kind of this way last year. And Evan, as a racing driver, you just said never say never, right? Yeah, I mean, it's racing. So many things can happen. It's like, it's, it, you can't predict it at all. So, I mean, you just really have to, to wait, and Merrill has to hope that nothing goes wrong in his favor, and uh, he can just keep it consistent, keep it clean, and get some good points to uh, bring his championship uh, fight really back in there. Let's wrap up, Let's go ahead. Yeah, and as we're talking here, obviously, the Brent Cruz car just went past, passed in front of us, and we saw it outside the booth, and uh, the front wheels are moved back towards the windshield, so you know it was still a very hard hit, but uh, give them credit. You know, the other thing that may have happened here, guys, also race control maybe told uh, this team that that car now needs to be parked and can't be on the racetrack just in case of possible parts yeah, falling off. Okay, on that. And, and, sorry and I, and I did that earlier today with yeah. a couple of cars right, but, but in what, FR. What in does it 
you know, I, I, I watched Dakota kind of fascinated because I was amazed that they let Rafa go on as long as they did last year. But what, um, when the stewards are looking at it, or the race directors looking at it, what are they looking for to say, nah, you've got to come here? It all comes down to safety. And I, like I said, I had to do that with three cars today in F4. I mean, they went off. They had some, just some problems with the cars. One was a suspect brake problem. The car came in. I saw them pull off the, the, the bonnet in the front there and turn around, look down inside the pedal clustered and I knew that it was a braking problem again so I just parked the car. It means all about safety with what you're doing. Let's head down to the pits and hear from our two-time champion Rafa Matos. He's with Ben. Thank you Jonathan. Well Rafa as you know motorsports can be so bitter. What's this feel like and what happened out there? Well, I, was, I was just trying to take it easy on the start and uh, you know I was going through the field and uh, apparently uh, Sheehan spun off and he kept it on, on the throttle and nailed the front of my car and I had nowhere to go and the car was badly damaged and uh, we, we tried to continue but there was there was no point. Yeah, it was. I saw you go back out there. I love your fighting spirit. We saw that last year at Circuit of the Americas, but it's just uh, it looks real beat up. Yeah, at that, that point I was just trying to get out of the way from the leaders. You know, I was trying to, to cause any trouble and. You know, unfortunately, uh, we, we were not able to continue the race. Well, Rafa Mato, sorry about your luck. Gentlemen, back up to you. Great stuff, Ben. And, yeah, uh, sad news for the Brazilian, who's been a great champion, and he'll live to fight another day. And I'm sure he'll be back next year, and obviously he'll come to Coda uh, and try to get the runner-up spot. He'll go head-to-head -head with Merrill for that. Uh, Brent Cruz is, yes, out of this race, but certainly not out of the championship. Remember, he started the day 133 points, and it was only really mathematically possible for Merrill to keep it going, and that's what he's going to have to do. But now the chance is much better of taking the championship to a grand finale at Cota. Nathan Hearn, let's have a look at this, though. We're going to be on board with the Q3 racing man. He's yet to win a race, guys. He's going to be kind of <laughs> licking his lips thinking, I got a chance here, because he's, he's one of those guys that, that knows what opportunity uh, is all about. And, and I think it's sort of cool what he's doing, obviously, coming from a different country. I'm obviously born and raised in Canada, so I was going to different countries. And, you know, there's an added element of international flavor, if you will. And so when he's come over here and done so well, that's sort of cool. But he gets to learn such so many great racetracks. And we were chatting earlier, obviously, he was mentioning it. So this racetrack here is probably one of the one or two top road courses in yeah. this country and it reminds me a lot of race courses that I ran in Europe you know just a long track fast corners slow corners it's got everything complete and it's exhilarating to drive I'm sure he's got a big smile on his face yeah I mean Nathan he's always happy he loves being in the car that whole Q3 racing team they've been really putting in the work this season they uh they need to persevere a lot because they've had a lot of bad luck I mean they're all putting in really great work but it's just everything unlucky happens to them so hopefully they can get that to turn around this weekend running in fourth right now he's really looking to get that first win for that team so um yeah i wish them the best of luck but uh yeah we'll see now we heard rafa describe his incident why don't we take a look at it for ourselves and again i'll lean to you guys and uh let you see what you see here it is rafa matos going out of the race michelle abate to the right here we are under braking you know, he's making good time up right Ty now. Young. Oh, okay. here, you oh, go. here yeah. you go. Yep. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing he can do. Just completely unavoidable. I mean, cars are cars are spinning around, doing crazy things, unpredictable things in front, and he just got caught up in the wrong place at the wrong time. So that's really unfortunate for that Peterson Racing three-dimensional service team. They they also put in a lot of work to get those cars fast, and they are. But, um, yeah, it's just really disappointing for them. Yeah, and what you don't know is it also took out, in fact, I noticed Ty Young going to the left there, Ty Young out as well as Michelle Abate. And I feel for her and for Ty Young because it's been a tough year for both of those two. Uh, they are regulars, Ty Young learning his way, Abate likewise, because uh, she was on the West Coast for a long time before she went national racing. And uh, yeah, you got to feel for him because uh, as Evan described, it's one of those accidents you just can't avoid it. Well, yeah. you know, it's funny because I always tell the young drivers that are coming into car racing out of karting, for us anyways in the series that I operate, is that you know, don't let somebody else's mistake become your problem, and that was somebody else's issue, mistake, or what have you. Now, he was doing a great job because he saw a hole, it looked like it was safe, not a high-speed part of the racetrack. He just can't see past the car in front of him to know what was happening, and then again, it was somebody else's mistake that took him out. Yeah, and then when there's so many cars, they're all doing different things, they're all moving in different directions, so when it's one car, it's a lot Lot easier to avoid but when five cars or whatever are all spinning out it's difficult well, guys let's catch our breath here as we get ready for the resumption so Connor Zillage leads the race Jay Buford is in second place and Merrill is in third so 
There's still a lot to come from this race. Well, we welcome our viewers back on MAV TV. Boy, have you come back at the right time. We've got a doozy of a race here. I haven't even looked at where Connor Zilich, uh, sorry, not Connor Zilich, uh, Connor uh, Mosak is because he started at the back. Luckily, he's, uh, I think, avoided most of the problems. He's trying to make his way through. But as it stands, Zilich leads the race and is on to make history in uh, Trans Am by winning both Trans Am and Trans Am TA2 in one weekend. Buford is trying to win his first race. And Merrill is trying to hold on and keep the championship alive. Nathan Hearn is looking for his first win, as is Austin Green. And then you go further back, uh, Lee Saunders trying out TA2 for the first time, down in 25th place. No mean feat, though. He's going very well indeed. Tyler Casera is out. Cruz is out. Matos is out. Abate is out. And I'm looking for uh, Hearn here. Excuse me, for... Um, Connor Mosak and Mosak currently in 20th position, so he's gone from the back all the way up to 20th. Don't count him out for at least a decent result. Well, and there's a bit of a bonus right now. Nobody's all spread out because we're underneath the yellow, so it bunches everybody together out. So on the restart now, you have an opportunity to do some uh, passing, so you're looking forward to that. And not that you want to see yellows, but when you're coming from the back and you need some help, you don't mind the yellows. Yeah, the yellows are great because it bunches everybody up. So say everybody, as you're trying to pass people, they all spread out. When you get the yellow, it bunches everybody up, so it gives, it gives you so you can pass much more cars because they're not obviously all spread out. Unfortunately, there is a rule in Trans Am right now where when there's a full course yellow and a restart, you can't pass before the start-finish line. So that sometimes does make it difficult because you have to wait so long before you can actually start going and passing. But luckily, I think Mosak, for his, for his sake, he's moved up enough places that he'll still be in a good position when that green flag goes to make up places. We're about to go green. Evan, take me through your restart procedure. My restart procedure is really just getting everything back up to temperature. you got to get your tires back up to temperature, your brakes, super important. And then just getting in the right mindset. You have to be aggressive. You have to plan where you want to go. Obviously, you can never plan anything because everything's a good plan until it goes green and then chaos happens. But you try and think of the options of what you could do and what you want to do. Um, and then really just trying to get everything up to temperature as much as you can. So when it goes green, you can really be right back in at 100%. And Scott, the expression, cooler heads prevail, is what comes to mind at a restart. Boy, if I had a dollar for every time I told patients to the young series that I'm <laughs> operating here. But, you know, and you can't put say anything about uh, Rafa on that because he was patient. He was yeah. doing a proper job. But uh, we've been underneath yellow here for a few laps because they had to repair that tire wall down the end of the straight. So they do such a great job here at the IR to take care of all that. Like I said, it's a very safe circuit, one of the top circuits uh, in this country. And uh, very pleased to be able to come here with our series. And obviously the Trans Am is running. But, uh, you know, still a lot of racing to go yet. We just don't know what's going to happen and, and this is the fun side of it right now i loved restarts all the time when i was driving because as you're mentioning I mean, it's just like okay am i ready have i done something better than the other guy how is my car and this is the point now where you want to time it correctly i know you guys have that rule in uh, in your racing where you have to sort of wait till the start finish line i'm not sure i'd do very good at that but there, yeah that's, that's it also can be a bit of a gimme there's not many gimmies in racing you're all going exactly within a couple of tenths of each other each and every lap so when you get a chance to really belt one and get ahead it's um, a huge that's jump a huge jump so the lights are off on the honda civic which means connor zillich now in control of this race the civic will come out of the way and we will be racing again so for us in our racing, we're all accelerating in turn 17. So where are they allowed to accelerate now here in the race? It's restart? really when Connor Zilich wants to. So there's a there's a zone, and then once they're, once Connor is in that zone, he just hits the gas wherever he wants, and mm -hmm. the guys behind him have to follow him, essentially. So it really allows the leader to get a really good jump over the rest of the field. And you can't overtake it until you're in that zone, for sure. Here we go, then. Connor Zilich leads the race. Can Buford get ahead of it? Eight laps gone off the 30. It's 100 miles of pure adrenaline and muscle car action here at VIR as everybody jostles for position. Nathan Hearn pushing hard as Merrill goes through to second. Nicely done. He gets past Jay Buford at the restart. Very important restart for the man from Salinas, California. And that is the move of a champion, our current champion from Coke Racing and Thomas Merrill does a great job for HP Tuners and gets second place. I just left it going through three there. You can see, I'm not sure if you guys saw that, Merrill's car was actually just putting down two patches of rubber yeah. on through there. I'm sure you saw that. that was oh, oh! Buford gets turned around. It looks like it was Austin Green oh. that may have turned him around. Yeah, that's really disappointing. Jay Buford just driving his own race and it gets tagged from behind. 
I think he'll be able to keep that car. Yeah, he's yeah. able to keep it rolling. Very light contact with the wall. So that's just like a setback. It'll put him to the back of the field, but he'll be able to keep rolling. It looked to me like it could have been Austin Green. We're on board with him, and yeah, there's damage to the front of his car, I think. Yeah. And that's why, uh, potentially, uh, that was Green that caused that incident, or at least knocked into the back. I'll, I'll turn to my race director to see who's, uh, who's, who's at fault there, but it looks as though it was a fairly obvious incident. Oh, there's that oh. car skittling off everywhere as off goes the 64 and that is uh, Matt Gray sadly he's kept going let's have another look at what happened here Scott what do you say well you know we always talk about yellows breed yellows as it is but cars are side by each right now and if you're not up beside somebody fully and can present yourself and let them know you're there sometimes you got to back out and I think that was the same situation there you stick your nose in and tag the back end of the car and we see this even here in the scenario with Jay Buford so a couple of things going on there and that's a difficulty so the stewards are going to be busy after this one yeah Seemed to me like more of a racing incident than, an, an, a, than a sort of a hit from behind, yeah. yeah. Well, it should be, and then all of a sudden you, you turn around, you end up getting uh, protests coming in. So I know our stewards are back there right now after our races today and, and dealing with that information. But here's the scenario. I mean, he's just moving. Anytime you get hit from behind, it's usually the guy in the backside that actually is definitely the guy that's going to get the penalty. Yeah, and then Austin Green, he, he wasn't trying to do that, obviously. No. That was just a racing incident. I mean, it's an accident from him. Um, we'll see how the stewards uh, decide that, but um, yeah, really unfortunate. Well, Ty Young coming into the pits and uh, probably going to retire the car. Now, Nathan Hearn in a great position. He's in third at the moment. Merrill has got Zillich. He is desperate to beat Zillich, but Zillich is desperate to win too. So there's so much going on in this race. And as we look further down, Trying to see who else might. Well, Connor Smosak is now 16th. How about that? Behind Barry Bowes. And we're going to be on board with Barry Bowes as we're on board with Austin Green here. But as you can see, we've lost his camera from that hit. Uh, and there is Annunciata. Oh, there's plenty of drama to talk about in this one. Yeah, so Austin Green's obviously missing his fender. So that'll affect him a little bit arrow wise. But yep. I mean, that car will be able to keep going. He still has the splitter, which is the main arrow component in the front of the car. So, I mean, he'll lose a little top speed on the straightaway, and he'll lose a little, uh, just like, grip at the top of the S's. But overall, he'll still be able to keep working with that but car. But it's distracting, isn't it, with it flapping like that? <laughs> yeah, that uh, that uh, windshield yeah. support flopping around, that's probably pretty distracting for him. But he's going to do his best to ignore that and focus on getting getting ahead of Thompson and Ziotto. Well, what a fascinating race this could turn out to be. Buford oh. comes in after that hit and into the barriers. And as you say, he got it going again. Patrick Paul coming in in the 34. He was involved in that incident. And Ty Young as well. Connor Zilic now crossing the line. Merrill right behind him. The gap. Uh, hardly anything between them. It's about, uh, well, in fact, it's 1.9 seconds to be exact. So yeah. Merrill's got it all to do. But this is where Merrill is in his happy place. Uh, but Zilic is a tough contender to, to, to basically close down. There's the damage you see to Austin Green's car. Yeah, Zilich has been in a, uh, a league of his own this weekend. He's been really fast. So I'm feeling like this race is going to be a battle for second with Nathan Hearn, Q3 Racing, and uh, Thomas Merrill. So we'll see. That'll be, I think, the really interesting battle in this, uh, this race. You know, it was interesting because we were watching qualifying. You know, Connor went out there and turned a good lap, and we just thought nobody else even getting close to him. So they were they were tuned in right from the very beginning, and really he just sat out because uh, he knew his time was almost unbeatable. So, let's get ready for more drama to come because there's going to be, I'm sure. I'm keeping an eye on uh, Connor Zilli, as Connor uh, Mosak because he's doing a really good job to say he uh, was racing in Charlotte at Xfinity on an oval last night. Couldn't be more different. Here he is again uh, and showing respect to a lady that uh, the team know well, passed away recently just two, ten days ago, and they decided, you know what, let's... Uh, very strong. Let's uh, let's let's honour her and bring Connor back. And he loves racing in Trans Am anyway. Charlotte's just down the road, so it was possible. And, and now he's enjoying it. Look, he's in the top 15 behind Josh Sarge, which is pretty impressive given we've only done 11 laps. So, and Boris said Junior. Let's give a shout out to him. He's in eighth position behind McAvern in another one of those three-dimensional cars. It's been a tough season, learning his way. Uh, in the top team or one of the top teams so Boris said junior Boris his father here mentoring him and coaching him not racing this weekend Nathan Hearn what can he do from third position will he stay out of trouble and uh, take up the podium not if I know Nathan he'll want to get into trouble 
He'll want to get amongst it. He'll want to get it to second, and then he'll want to get it to first. That's the mindset of that young man. You know, we're so, about a third, third of the way through the race right now, and these cars have, is it 24 gallons of fuel? So yeah, you're burning off a lot of weight. something like so, that. Uh, so right now, I mean, the car's probably in a very good spot because some of the weight's off of it, and that's what I always look for, just sort of see when the car's really happy so you can make the best of it. So back on board with Austin Green in that uh, <laughs> damaged car. Can't be easy, flapping around everywhere. All sorts of stuff going on, but he's going to keep his concentration. And he's doing a good job so far of, of keeping that concentration, more importantly. Look at that, flat out through this section. I love this section. Yeah, that's my favorite. I think so far, my favorite sector in, sector in racing is that uphill S is in one of these cars. It's just, it's a blast. I mean, I've driven a lot of different car and track combinations, but that's just something special. Putting the hurt on Thomas Annunziata, the youngster, at the moment. And I say the youngster, they're both youngsters, but uh, Annunziata is still a teenager, as you are, Evan. Um, and Austin Green, 22 now. But he's got pace, and he could get an overtake here. Here we go. But we're under caution, again. <laughs> yeah, so he can make an overtake now, or he nope. might risk a penalty. Yes. So you got to be careful with passing the yellow. That will uh, get you a 40-second penalty really quickly if you're uh, not careful with that. And, and they see that not only from the flag stands, we can actually see the uh, Honda safety car coming up right now for to pick up the leader. But you thought you were coming in the booth to avoid all this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, that's what I had on today in race control. But, you know, when you talk about the yellow, it's, it's sort of neat right now because you've got the flags that I started out with, and now there's Flagtronics. You've got the electronic boards. You guys now have the Flagtronic programs inside the car itself. So you guys get a lot of alerts about what's going on right away. So when it comes out to yellow, it's pretty hard to say I didn't see it if you pass somebody underneath the yellow. Yeah, the Flagtronic system is great. I mean, you got a little screen inside your car like right in your vision that flashes whatever color the uh, the flag is. So I don't think we can see it in this view with Nathan Hearn. Turn three but, is um, the incident. We can see it on our screens up here. There's a car stopped at turn three, so we're going to come across it very soon. We're on the main straight. But yeah, Flagtronic, amazing uh, system that they've got. Yeah, uh, just really the drivers good aware, racing. yeah. And Andretti now has got, uh, of all people, Conor Mosak behind him, so that's going to be a good tussle. Two guys with different reasons to want a big result, and Barry Bowes is there as well. So the ASIO data on board will be coming alive fairly soon. Now we're coming across the incident. And guys, get your eagle eyes out. Let's see what's happened here. Yeah, some car off into the barriers over there to the car right, the I think. In comes Jake Buford. And uh, they're having a look at the engine and underneath and everywhere else, having a good poke around. But he's, been in, he's been in a few times, so I wonder from that hit if he must have had something internally got damaged okay. other than just like the slight body work. Because he's been in the pits twice, so uh, yeah, he must have some issue that they're trying to sort out. I feel for him because uh, the qualification was so good and he had a real good chance at a run at the win here, especially with the championship going on around him. Um, but boy, what drama does have. Zilich, though, staying out of it for now. And it's Zillage, Merrill and Hearn. And Anunciata in fourth position. Austin Green still fifth with that damaged car. Caleb Baker, we just got a glimpse of him in the 18 car. They now own their own team. They, team, they bought their cars from, um, from uh, Kent, Kent, Kent Waits, Waits yeah, at Showtime and TA2. So uh, Kent's going to concentrate on TA. And so Caleb Bacon and the Bacon team, the Baconators, uh, or CB Motorsports to be the official Cortex Racing Bacon do... Uh, Dev team, development team, are now on their own with their own team, and so this would be a really good result if Caleb Bacon could get a sixth place. Let's head down to that CB Racing team and head down to the crew with Ben Sisson. Thank you, Jonathan. I'm here with Rick Reynolds, the crew chief for Caleb Bacon and CB Motorsports. I've really seen you guys step up your operation the last couple of months, and now Caleb's six. He's got to be feeling pretty good. What's your driver saying on the radio? Yeah, he's real happy. You know, we're uh, feeling good about the continued progress, just a little bit better every time. And uh, the big thing right now is what the car is going to do over the long run. So we're trying to stay clean, keep the pace we're at. We're real comfortable with the pace, feel like we got a car that could be there at the end. One thing we've learned from the Big Machine Vodka Spike Coolers TA2 Series is you can't just get in and be fast. There is a little bit of a learning process. Was that kind of hard for you guys to learn? But now that you have, you're moving up through the field. Yeah, and, you know, for first year, single car team, you know, it, it, it has been definitely a learning curve. We're going to be back with four cars next year. And, uh, you know, taking that knowledge and success we've had this year right into next year. Wow. 
back with four car field next year. Rick, good luck out there. Thank you guys so much. And welcome to the TA2 series. I love it. Thank you. Doesn't get any better than that. Four cars coming back next year. We are, everybody talks about the early 70s as being the purple patch and the great years, the golden years of Trans Am. Ha! Tut tut, I say. I say this is it. We've got young guys going to NASCAR or Zillage, possibly going to Formula One with GM. We heard that yesterday. Wow. Lots of stories to tell you. But we've got young guys learning road courses in their teens, like Evan Slater, like Brent Cruz, and like Connor Zillage. World Kart champions, I may add. They could have gone anywhere in motorsport, but they're here in Trans Am. Then you've got Rafa Matos and Tyler Casera and guys that have been around just a few years in these seats. And then you've got Australians, young guys like 21-year-old Nathan Hearn. It's so exciting. Richard Petty's grandson racing in the 43, carrying that famous number. So many great stories here in the current. What about Boris said? There's another one coming. Junior, he's got the same haircut. Excuse me. You know, it's amazing you talk about everything that's going on right now. The rumble in the paddock this weekend is that maybe back to some international racing, a possibility going back to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, the old Mosport as we know it. Talk about Trans Am history. Ron Fellows, a champion, part Absolutely, owner yeah. of Mosport. And uh, I, I, when I got involved in car racing in my Formula Ford days, I was watching the whole Roush uh, Trans Am team back in the days of Con, uh, um, Tom Bloy and uh, Willie T. Ribs and all that sort of stuff seeing coming up in the factory Fords and so it was a huge series up there right now so probably making his way back up to Canada for what I'm hearing so it's expanding I mean the competition in this series right now is tremendous and uh, yeah the young stars like the one that we have sitting beside us in the booth here today it's pretty really cool I to tell see. You, it's an exciting time Evan to be around this sport and particularly Trans Am so so much drama we think we're going to go green next time bye well, let's hope we're going to go green next time bye um, but we've had so much drama already this particular race. Let's and the championship going on now to Dakota. Yeah. That's an amazing side of it. Yeah. I mean, we didn't expect that when we started this this morning. Well, let's take another look at uh, Rafa Matos again because uh, that pretty much uh, started us all off. And that started, if you like, the uh, big moment here for Rafa on board with Jay Buford. Here comes Nathan Hearn. This is what Buford slowed down. He got a little tap there from Nathan Hearn. So he wasn't going as quick. And I think that's another reason why perhaps Austin Green went into the back of him. Yeah. He's kind of expecting him to be going out faster. Yeah, he got checked up by Nathan yeah. there. Yeah, I mean, it's just really an eight, a racing incident. I think when he went into that wall, what I've heard is he broke a steering component. That's why he's had to retire that car, oh, unfortunately. Okay. Well, great intel, thank you. Uh, what a race. There is Austin Green. That's the aftermath, if you will, in the 89 uh, Doug Peterson three-dimensional services. We went to the factory earlier this year at Detroit. Fantastic company making some really high-end uh, 3D uh, parts for all sorts of different in industries, including uh, Elon Musk's uh, cars as well. Uh, so very, very interesting to go to the factory and see what Doug Peterson and his huge factory of different factories, got many in fact, and so it's great to have him in racing. He's a former Trans Am champion himself, and uh, yeah, he's now bringing on young guns, like Boris said, uh, and it's great to see, and of course he keeps uh, the likes of Rafa Matos uh, to try and win the championships for him and also help those youngsters. Have you been getting help? Who, who mentors you? And you've had a few teams. But I've had a lot of different mentors. I mean, Nick Middleton from Cube 3 Racing. I've had Joe Stevens. I raced with him all last year. Kent the Waits. I've had a lot of great people that have been around that have really made me who I am. So, yeah, I mean, I'm really thankful for all of that. But, um, yeah, now we're looking on to the future. I mean, I've had all the great mentors, but <laughs> I need to uh, find a, somewhere to go in the future. So that's what we're looking at right now. Take your helmet but, wherever uh, you go. That'll be what Scott Goodyear will tell you. Yeah. <laughs> you never, never leave home without it is what they used to always say. Yeah. Well, Conor Zilic has got to get this restart right because he's got our current champion, Thomas Merrill, behind him. Merrill needs, and I say that, needs to win this race uh, if he's going to keep everything going. And, oh, okay, with both the uh, other two out, obviously he doesn't need to, but I know in his mind, and that's exactly what he told me, that's all he's trying to do because he knows if he does that, that's the most he can do. Yeah, the more points he gets here, the easier it gets at Coda. So he's going to be trying his best for everything. Here we go, then. The restart here on lap 14 of 30. Away they go. Zilic in the silver hair. Covers Number the inside. Seven. Very smart going in one. Covers that inside line. He does. Very nicely done. Nathan Hearn. Got to be careful not to let Annunciata and Green up into his grill. But oh, off Darren goes Mark, another off car. Track. That's Darren Mock. Yeah, absolutely. The 51 goes off. 
on board with Green behind Annunciata. Damage to the car, but it's not affecting him as they go through three. Good restart by Zilic. Merrill holding on to second and holding up the rest of the field, but wants to stay there and wants to chase down Zilic. We're going to stay with Austin Green as we well work through the Optima Battery Snake up towards the Bennett Bridge Hall. Uphill S's, a there lovely was a, section. There was a three-dimensional service car in the back that was smoking a lot there. It looked like maybe he had some contact and a tire rubbing. It may have been, I don't know exactly who it was, but it could have been the uh, 83 of Morissette Jr. Okay, we'll keep an eye out Having for that. Into Oak Tree. Love when you watch under braking here, you see the front splitter just sort of rubbing on the ground. Yeah, I mean, that's the goal. The, uh, ideally, you actually wouldn't want it rubbing on the ground. Ideally, you would want it like infinitely like a small amount just off the ground. Because when it's rubbing, you're losing grip. So you want it just as low as you can get it without actually touching. And these guys are really doing a great job setting up. These guys and their crew are really doing a great job setting up these cars to be perfect on the brakes. I tell you what, we're spending a lot of time on board with Austin Green. And well, we might because he's he's battling well here, uh, given the fact that he's got a damaged car. So it can't be, you know, there's certainly no uh, bent suspension or anything like that. It's just peripheral damage. Yeah, just and he's dealing with it. Yeah, Austin Green's a really impressive driver. I think there's a, uh, a rumor that he's trying to go to NASCAR next year, so I don't know, I don't know where he's we'll see him. He's certainly got the contacts. Yeah. <laughs> His dad actually now works in NASCAR uh, as a marshal, I think. Yeah. And uh, so he's still involved, but of course he was, he was a champion back in the 90s. Oh, Austin Green going down the inside of Thomas and Enziata. Can't make it stick. He didn't, wasn't late enough on the brakes, but definitely a good attempt. Connor Zillich pulling away. The gap 0.9 between he and Merrill. So Merrill tried... Uh, to make a move up the inside. It was covered nicely, as Scott pointed out, by Connor Zilic, and now he's building on that lead as they go 2-3, and you can see that gap yourself. So we were starting the chat just a second ago about, uh, you know, burning off the fuel in these things, 24 gallons, you know, and part about, uh, you know, just a lot of weight coming off these race cars. I mean, when do you find the best time of this car is as far as tire wear is concerned and losing fuel? It's hard. I mean, it's a balance. So obviously at the start of the race, you're going to have the best tires. At the end of the race, you're going to have the lightest weight. So somewhere around the middle is probably where you're going to be getting your best lap times. You set your tire pressures ideally so they're really good in the end because that's when it matters. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're in first in the beginning of the race and if you drop back in the end, it's useless. So you can set your car to be good in the end. So, I mean, normally it's going to be pretty pretty quick ideally from that three quarters to full race distance. Okay, so right now when you're saying the middle, these guys have got a car that's working pretty well right now. And yeah, these guys yeah. probably should have a car that's working pretty well. It'll probably ramp up and start working better towards the end, but ideally the car will be working the best it can through the whole, whole race. So 16 of the 30, we're getting down to the middle of this race. It's 100 miles or we get 30 laps in, and so it could be a time race if we get a lot of problems, and we look as though you were absolutely right about uh, Boris said, because it looks as though he's coming in to tame, change a tyre. He's not in yet, but we're expecting from Ben Sissel in the pit lane, who's just told us that he is on his way, and I can see the crew preparing right in front of our commentary position as the leaders come across the line again. It is Zilic still leading from Merrill and Nathan Hearn. Annunciata is fourth, Austin Green is fifth, Caleb Bacon in sixth place. This is one of the cracking races of the season and I, I, I never know, I always think that, uh, you know, your race craft is so honed by the end of the season. You know what you're expecting, everybody knows who's doing what, and you know who you're coming across and what their skills are. And so we kind of get the best race craft in the last few races. Well, and I think as you start to learn the car and these guys that drive it year after year, maybe not so much so, but I think as young drivers coming through this thing, you want to be one with the car. I always tell these young drivers that we have coming into our season, you need to wear the car. You need yep. to understand, and I say this because I started downhill skiing at a young age, and you want to wear the skis type thing. You know, for you guys, you've got to... Big, big car to carry all this weight because these cars weigh 2,800 pounds. 2,800 pounds. Okay, so I mean, this is something that you have to wear all the way around you, and then as the season goes on, you start to slip into it. It's like putting yeah, a pair of jeans on, your own skin. and you're absolutely yep. into it. You just love to drive that. Yeah, yeah and the mean, closer you can get that car to feel as though you're part of it, the better. Yeah, and then the better you can drive it, and then the harder you can race it. So yeah, at the end of the season, when you're getting really used to the car and getting comfortable on it, you'll be able to race a lot better because you're comfortable with what you have and uh, you're more confident in the moves you can make. On board again with the ASIO data, Barry Bowes. Bowes in 13th position, he's got Andretti behind him, and as you can see, he's got uh, Thad Moffitt in front of him. 
season for Thad Moffat. He's really done well. I was talking to Scott Lagacy about him earlier in the weekend, and he's really pleased with the way the kid has uh, put himself together. And even though he's got that big name behind him and that famous number, um, he's certainly not got a silver spoon by any means whatsoever, and he's doing the, all the hard work. And Scott Lagacy is never easy on his drivers, and he said he admitted to me that he's, he's, he's got a, a soft spot for Thad Moffat because he's doing the hard work, and that's what's important in motor racing. Evan Slater, I've seen myself doing that hard work and that's what makes the difference between those that make it and those that don't. Welcome back to our viewers on MAV TV. We are having a cracking penultimate round to the championship. We've got some great stories for you. Caleb Bacon in sixth place at the moment. We're watching where Connor Mosak is making his way. He's up to 10, folks. He's just got into 10, representing Sherry Strong and M1 race cars. I was talking about Scott Lagacy and Thad Moffat's story, but Connor Mosak could be in the top 10 at the end of this race if he keeps going on that. But the way he's going, he might be in the top five. Brilliant stuff. And Nathan Hearn could be on for a win. He's in second at the moment. Yeah, Nathan Hearn's just doing a really great job managing the car right now. He's trying to keep the gap with Thomas tight, not uh, not overheat the tires, just keep the car in check, minimize mistakes, and just trying to drive the race, let the time kick down or tick down, and then uh, then he'll really start making moves and being aggressive. See how long I, that I, straight I is? Four thousand square feet. I got it too, I'm too excited for Nathan Hearn. He's still in, still in third. Silix leads. Merrill second. Yeah, I mean, Zilich is just walking away with this. He so is his, at the moment, isn't he? he? Uh, he's got that car hooked up. That silver hair team, they really know what they're doing with this car. And they uh, they got it working fast, and he's comfortable in it, and he's just driving it, yeah, driving gap, his own race. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at his uh, lap times. Yeah, 150.1, uh, you know, and that uh, is what he's doing right now. But even down to the 49s is his best time. And other guys right now are in the 50s or 51. So he just really has uh, that car. He's wearing that car like we talked about before. And... And he's just doing a great job. That we saw that also uh, previously in you know, St. Louis. It's just amazing how he uh, he's all in one with the car and just really doing a great job. Well, lest we forget, he's won two races, two street races from the back to the front, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, that's impressive. I mean, that's just like a lot of aggression with the passing, but also not too much to hurt up your race car. And he did those races with keeping the car completely clean, which is really, really impressive. So this race, his car is obviously completely clean because he hasn't even seen another car because he's just been gaining a second a lap on the guy in second. So he's really doing a great job this this race just managing it. Uh, just to illustrate it, we were talking about Connor Mosak up to 10th position. Well, his best lap, or his last lap anyway, a 152.1 compared to that 150.1 of Connor Zillage. It just shows you... Uh, I would say that those two guys are, you know, equally yoked in terms of their ability, uh, in terms of Conor Mosak, a huge success story for us uh, now with Toyota and going big guns uh, in Xfinity. Uh, and Conor Zilic just moments away from doing that. He was very interested in TA. I did a little bit of ferreting to find out, but uh, there was definitely a reason why GM decided to put him in the TA car. Uh, and Justin Marks wanted to have a closer, closer look. Of course, he owns a NASCAR team, so that's why he wanted to see Zilich, and I think he got a good eye for him. I'm sure he had a lot of fun, because when you go to 550 horsepower to what that class is unlimited, so you got A59 yeah. or maybe more, I mean, uh, you drive, you understand that every time I got into a car that had more horsepower, it's like, man, I want this for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah, and know? then it makes it hard to take a step back, so you're yeah. like, oh, this thing's so slow. But um, yeah, he's doing a great job. We were having a laugh, me and Thomas Merrill, uh, earlier in the season. I said, how is it going up against these kids? Because, you know, Merrill's an experienced driver. He's done a lot of racing in his time, in his 30s now. But uh, really, in terms of Trans Am, you know, this is, this is, he's at the height of his career. And yet, he suddenly found himself in a battle against Connor Zilich at 17, Brent Cruz at 15, Evan Slater at 17. And he said, you know, it's, it's, it's not fair. <laughs> You know, as we're watching him go around the track there, I mean, I just sort of visualize. You can see how much the car is working, and it's sort of, you can see the back end almost stepping out. We were sort of watching Connor Zillage a few minutes ago, and that thing just seemed planted. It went yeah, through I mean, the corner. I mean, you watch Connor's like, car, and it's just like, I mean, we don't have an onboard from him, but I imagine he's just not doing really any work with the steering wheel. He's just turning it slowly, not fighting at all. That car just looks hooked up. Whereas Merrill, you can see he's working with a little bit of setup issues, so he's having to fight it a lot more, and that's letting Nathan Hearn. Uh, kept right up to him. So that'll be a great battle because Nathan Hearn has closed that gap significantly. Big time, yeah. Nathan Hearn all over Thomas Merrill now. So this is going down to the wire. Ten laps to go. 
and this is where it got, starts to get a little bit itchy because the car's done a lot of work, the tyres have done even more, and you ask your question, which is how much have I got left? Uh, and this is where you kind of find out, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nathan's just trying to get a really good drive off that last corner because he's going to try and probably make a move at the end into the uh, into this turn at the end of the straight here. So we'll see we'll see what kind of straight line speed he has and how much he has on the brakes. Well, it's now 4.5 seconds the gap between Zilic and Merrill, but Merrill's got enough on his hat plate at the moment. He's going to have to hold off Hearn, and it's important for Merrill to hold off Hearn because he can't lose places because every time he does, he loses more points on the championship chase. And with both Brent Cruz and Rafa Matos out, this is a huge opportunity for our current champion, Thomas Merrill, who won it, let's remember, on the countback. There's Conor Mosak, first real glimpse of him in the number eight. And it's great to have him back. He's a great success story for us. He came through Trans Am, and now he's in Xfinity, just as Sam Mayer and many others have. But uh, we wish him well in this one. So go, Connor Mosak. Had a quick chat with Connor, and uh, yeah, he did a few tests uh, here, and then he was telling me that because Charlotte's not far away, they practice in the morning on Saturday morning. The race is Saturday night. You got 24th overall last night uh, but I'm not taking that away from him because he was saying to me that uh, he'd never raced at Charlotte so he'd, he'd only had simulation practice we went to Charlotte a few years ago Connor was there but that's a completely different track well, it's, uh, and was that on the oval or the roval well he was on the oval last okay, night in the oval yeah I ran any car on the oval which actually uh, you watch the oval on TV all the time with NASCAR and we got a chance to go over there early uh, in the IRL days and run there. It was actually a, a pretty cool racetrack. And plus you're racing at Charlotte Motor Speedway, so that was pretty cool yeah. for an IndyCar guy. Oh, absolutely. So, Nathan Hurd. Evan, I'm gonna put you in this car. Where are you gonna make the move? Where am I gonna make the move? It's hard. So Thomas Merrill, from what I've, when I've raced with Thomas, he's a really strong motor. Like, that car is fast on the straightaway. I don't know if it's something to do with the rear wing setting they have, but that car is fast on the straight. So it's gonna be hard to do it into here or into turn one. So I would say into turn four is probably the best bet. I mean, it's a slower it's a slower zone, so if you can get out of turn three really good, get good drive, and just send your nose in there to into turn four, you can kind of just block him on the exit, and then he really has nowhere to nowhere to go, nothing to do besides let you by. But right now, it seems like the gap from Nathan Hearn to him is actually growing. So Thomas flipped the switch and is going a little faster now, pushing the car a little harder. So Nathan but it looks really, tough. Yeah. <laughs> Right now, what he has to do is, Nathan just has to do is close that gap as much as he can, get right up on him so he can make the move. Austin Green thinking exactly the same thing on an Enciato. He's had a few goes, but he hasn't made it stick just yet. He's trying again here as they come into turn one. The big machine vodka, Spike Cooler's turn one. And he's right there on the rear end of the 90. Trying to force an Enciato into a mistake as they dive into turn two. Great racing from Trans Am. Really, really exciting stuff. We can't wait for the end of this race to come because it's going to be so exciting. We welcome back our viewers from Map TV. I hope you're enjoying this. And if you uh, are watching it and concentrating on it, you'll be able to see it again on Thursday night. We'll have all the highlights of TA and TA2, and it's well worth reliving what has been so far an absolutely stunning race here. The penultimate one of the season we go to Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas for the final round in a few weeks time and the championship is still up for grabs. Nathan Hearn yet to win a race but he's pushing hard in that Q329. Evan Slater and Scott Goodyear alongside me. Enjoying it boys? Yeah it's exciting. I mean a lot, a lot of exciting things happening, a lot of crazy things happening, a lot of unexpected things. So it's a, it's a great race so far and I'm really looking forward to the end of it to see what happens. Especially when you tune in and you think that we're going to see a champion crown today and then you're going to move yourself <laughs> yeah. on to uh, on Dakota. So that's uh, disappointing for some, but great for some of us to get a chance to uh, see what's going to unfold at uh, Circuit of the Americas here in a few weeks. Great place to finish the championship too. A big Formula One circuit with plenty of runoff and obviously plenty of places to make mistakes too. And uh, But I think most people enjoy racing there. We love having Trans Am in little old Elroy, Texas as I call it. And, uh, yeah, that Formula One circuit has uh, turned out to be an absolute doozy. Dylan McAvern, uh, first time we've really had a proper look at uh, the number 17 uh, in sixth place. He's got ahead of Caleb Bacon, who's dropped to seventh. Uh, Dylan just behind Austin Green. Great to have him on board. And remember, Dylan also racing with Thad Moffitt uh, as well. I'm sure you've raced him a few times, too. Yeah, Dylan McAvern. 
Yeah, we've raced a lot. I mean, he's a he's a Trans Am veteran, so I think most of the races that I've uh, done in Trans Am, I think he's been somewhere around. So he's really experienced for sure. Well, he's getting a good result. He needs one too at the end of the season. Annunziata, pleased for him. He's had to miss a few. Oh, oh no, Austin Green. Austin Green. Where did that happen? That I seems wonder. like the exit of turn one to me, but I could be wrong. Yeah, it is the exit. It is of the exit one. one. Yeah. Car's smoking a bit, so I don't know. I don't know what happened there. Not about breaks himself, maybe because he's definitely. Oh, oh he's beast. Oh. Oh, man, that's going to bring so, out a caution. Yeah, we get a full course caution. It packs the group back oh, up again. Rolling. Yeah, it's definitely in the horseshoe. Yeah, he's, he's rolling. rolling. He's getting it going. He's got it. Good man. So Austin Green will find out what happened. There's a lot of white smoke, so I wonder. if... Ah, an entire ride. That it looks like the, the right answer. rear, I think, is yeah. something going he's astute with that. He's struggling somehow because he should be out of there by now. And yeah. It's, it's yeah. too well, deep now he's, now I think he's got a puncture up here. Oh, yeah, right. you saw sparks there. Yeah, plus he's actually side. in the impact zone on the other there, so they're not going to wait very much longer for him to be able to get out. No, they're, they're going to have to go to a full smoke. Jim Gallagher's Jim Gallagher I think that's just brake smoke. So the brakes get super hot, so when you pull into the piss, they kind of catch on fire if you're just stopped Well, let's take a look at the replay, and again, guys... Tell me what you see. And with the full course cautions out now, like we thought was going to be here, so let's ride along with Austin Green into the braking zone. Everything seems normal. And the back end comes around. Yeah, the back end comes around really aggressively. I don't know. That could be a that could be an outside rear left tire puncture, or that could just be he lost the rear. I yep. think I would guess it's a puncture in the in the, the left rear, but uh, we we won't entirely know until we get confirmation from that three dimensional services team. Well, we're into another caution, our 90th. Well, it feels like it. Yeah. <laughs> but great drama, great action. Well, you know, if I'm Tom, Thomas Merrill right now, I'm thinking, okay, here's my opportunity to get one more chance to uh, have a shot at this. So once you all pack up and get the restart going, that's what everybody's looking for to make that pass. Well, Connor Zilic still continues to lead this race. We've had all sorts of drama, and as you can see... Yeah, that tire's cut down. The tire is cut down, and therefore Austin Green is out of this race. about to say he needs uh, somebody to put that out and he has got them and he's out of the car more importantly uh, and Austin Green's day is over dramatically and do you think that was a, a puncture that just spun him around yeah I mean I think so I mean I don't think the puncture would just happen randomly like in the grass just spinning around no, trying yeah. to get it out of the grass so I think the puncture must have happened on the track um, so it must have been maybe some debris still I, I, I don't know there's a lot of different ways a puncture can happen maybe he could hit a curb wrong had contact with a car you really don't know so there's a lot of ways that tire could have gone down, but it's just, it's really unfortunate for Austin Green. There is Austin with the helmet off. But uh, Scott, ha hats off to these guys at VIR. They do a hell of a job of clearing up. You must be pleased as a race director the way they go. You know, and when any time you have an incident here, these guys are on the response very quickly. And then, uh, you know, sometimes when we have scenarios with our cars, it's two at a time. So they got a lot of work to do sometimes. Let's head down to the pits. Ben Sissel's got uh, the crew chief of our champion, Thomas Merrill. Yeah, thank you, Jonathan. I'm here with Bowser talking to Thomas Merrill, who is back in contention with the championship. And we saw it come down to the wire last year. Somehow he just stays in. Is there any way you guys can catch that number seven, or is he just trying to maintain? What's he saying on the radio? Uh, he's pretty happy with the car right now. The uh, Bennett uh, Logistics Ford Mustang Cope chassis, all these guys here, you know, they're, they we work our butts off. But um, I don't think we got anything for the seven today. Uh, they they definitely uh, got something figured out, and we need to uh, do a little catch up. But yeah, the championship thing is never over till it's over, as we all know. I love it. Now, one thing to look out for: I've been watching this just from my eyesight. Now that the cars are going to be bunched up, look for Dylan McAvern with SLR and Connor Mosack. It seems like they found some speed. So Dylan McAvern, very good at VIR. So watch out for this restart. Jonathan Scott and Evan, I'm going to send it back up to you. Welcome back to Bow TV and our coverage of Trans Am TA2 from VIR. We're under caution uh, and we're very close to the end of this race. Uh, 16 minutes to go and this is supposed to be a 30 lap race. 23 have gone. We've had everything happen. But one thing that hasn't changed is at the front. Connor Zilic has been cool, calm and collected as he has been on weekend. He won the TA race. He's about to make history. If he can continue this, he will be the first man in Trans Am history to win both races uh, of a Trans Am weekend. And that's a pretty good number to take and put on your CV. 
uh, resume. Merrill uh, in second place, our champion from this year, or last year I should say, currently the champion of Trans Am and trying to do it again, but he had a real uphill mountain to climb at the start of this race, but it was changed early on when Brent Cruz went out of the race and Rafa Matos pretty much, uh, but it, within, a, within a lap of each other, that changed the whole complexion of the race. And now Merrill senses the opportunity, and he does just need to finish second, but he'd love to finish first. With me, Scott Goodyear and Evan Slater, it's been a cracker, hasn't it? Super exciting. I mean, Thomas Merrill, he, he's, uh, he's in a good position right now, but he's got a lot of fast guys behind him. So he's, gonna, he's obviously looking forward to Connor Zilich, but I mean, as you heard from his, uh, his crew chief and engineer, that he doesn't think he has the pace for the number seven car today. So... But it's just not going to stop you trying on the, yeah, no, it's not, <laughs> on the it's restart not stop turn trying, one. <laughs> but he's really going to be focused on trying to keep these guys behind him because um, they're really aggressive. They're fast, and they all, Thomas Annunziato and Nathan Hearn, both really want to win these races, and he also really wants to. So there's a lot of aggression happening, so it's going to be an exciting restart for sure. And again, guys, I'm going to turn to you to ask, what is the key to the perfect restart? Well, a lot of times it's jumping and getting a good jump on the, uh, if you're leading on the guy that's behind you or if you're in second, you're trying to maybe hang back a little bit and then get a jump as soon as the guy goes to the throttle. But with you guys having that rule that you can't pass until you go past the start and finish line, it sort of bundles everything up that we ever learned when we were in junior formulas, you know, and that sort of stuff. So I guess that, uh, that, that rule's been in place for a long time in Trans Am. No, this is the first real year with the rule. I'm personally really not a fan because I think it kind of just, like, takes the restarts and makes them less exciting because you yeah. can't make up as many places. You can't do as much. So, I mean, the rule is good. I think they have it so you try and wad up less race cars on the restart. But from my perspective, they never really get wadded up right on the initial jump. They never get, like, wadded up before the start-finish line. So I, I'm not a huge fan of the rule. I feel like it kind of just, like, takes the restarts and makes them less exciting and less of an opportunity to pass. In, but, unless, you're the, unless you're the leader. Unless you're the leader. Then, <laughs> you, no, then you really, like, like, it, like okay, then you can get right. away without getting uh, passed as easily. But, um, yeah, it's definitely an interesting rule, and it, it can change up restarts and the dynamic of them a lot. And probably from racetrack to racetrack, too, I guess. I mean, here you got a bit more of a straight before turn one. I mean, there's probably some places where maybe you get a restart, I guess, line rock, for instance, and the corner comes up very quickly. So if you're really on the guy's tail, maybe you get him under braking. Yeah. Thing, so. Yeah, but then also from the other way, it can hurt you. Like, I know mid-Ohio is notoriously bad for if you're, like, below, like, 10th or 11th place, you're still going to be in the carousel while the leaders are taking right. off. So then it just, like, there's, like, the top ten that are all with each other, and then the rest is all spread out. So, I mean, it is track to track, but luckily here at VIR, um, turn 17 is really wide open, so all the guys are going to be on the straight before they go racing, which is really good for them. We're still under caution here at uh, VIR, a cracking place to be for the penultimate round. We're going to go green this time. The lights are going to come off on that Honda Civic safety car, and then it's all up to Zillage to make it. He had a, what, four or five second lead over Thomas Merrill before the caution, and it's got to be disappointing when you've done all the hard work. He, he won by a country mile yesterday. Uh, he's not going to do that now, uh, given that we've done 24, and with six laps, Merrill is not going to lose him, I don't think. But we'll see just how good Zillage is at this restart, and we'll also see if Merrill's got what it takes. Watch out for Herm. We might get some great onboards from him uh, as he tries to attempt to get past Thomas Merrill, let's hope it doesn't end in tears, but as they come out of Hogpen, once again, into the pits goes the pace car, and Zilic now controls this race, and it's up to him to decide when to accelerate and take this race by the scruff of the neck. Here he goes! Zilic accelerates away. Nathan Hearn is right by Thomas Merrill, so hopefully he can make a good move into turn one. Well, we'll soon find out. Down to the big machine, Bodka. Spike Cool is turn one. Mosak on the outside. The number 10. Oh, Misha Goitberg coming into play now. He on the inside there. Merrill still second. Nathan Hearn doesn't do anything. He now looks to the inside. Ooh, thought about it, but uh, he wasn't close enough. Yeah, wasn't able to make a stick, but that top three, and it seems like the top five so far are unchanged from that restart. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Contact in the back looks Whoa, like between Moffitt. Thad Moffitt and Misha Goldberg. Thad, Thad, Thad Moffitt, Thad Moffitt going around. around. The 43 gets turned around, and again, a similar incident that we had with Austin Green. And more fender-to-fender uh, -fender contact a little bit further up. You know, those S's promote that sort of stuff because you get yourself beside somebody else, and you don't want to take your foot off the gas, but 
and then you end up with uh, the fenders rubbing, so we saw some contact there. It looks as though Boris Setz got some big Yeah, it looks like Boris had a little more contact. Connor Mosak really made the best of that situation, gained a few places, so he's probably up to six, if I had to guess. Somebody's off in turn 10, Ooh, South somebody, Bend. Yeah, that's fast Dip through the there. Wheel. Let's take another look at what we just saw, though. Here's another replay, boys. On board with Lostowski. There's Moffitt in front of him, so we'll see what happens to Moffitt because he does get turned around. Here he is, coming up on Misha Goikberg. Goikberg turns in, and, well, bang, 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 and away you go. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that's just a racing incident. Rubbing's racing. That was, that was tight racing. <laughs> Let's ask our and, race uh, director. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I agree, actually, and I think that could have probably turned around and gave a bit more room on the outside to help himself, but those are the sort of things you learn as you get involved in this sort of race, racing. Robin's racing, that's certainly true of Trans Am and Muir, you're right, heavy cars, we're all looking for the same spot of asphalt, and uh, yeah, it's rough out there, but that's what happens. Nathan Hearn, through the gearbox, past our commentary position, and down towards the horseshoe, once again, he's lost a little bit of time to the leaders, still in third place, and Annunziata, still in touch with him. It seems like, maybe race monitor is wrong, but it seems like Thomas Merrill has dropped out of the, out of the position, Nathan Hearn's now in second, and Thomas Merrill's nowhere to be seen. Now, that would be dramatic. Let's hope it's not a, just a transponder because, well, uh, let's, well, well, let's just pause for a second because I don't think that's the case on track. No, so I'm looking at Yeah, we're right. riding along yeah. third and he's third. Okay, so it's just race monitor okay. scaring us. He likes to do this race yeah. But uh, Thomas good, Merrill good passing over case. every curve now. 27 of the 30 gone. Under the bridge and into the S's again. The bridge hall. Uphill S's. There's Conor Mosak in fifth now. An incredible run by him. McAvern up to four. So, fascinating racing this. But still Zillage. And I still think that uh, Thomas Merrill's out there, personally. Yeah, he is. I think it's yeah. just a transponder issue when he crossed the line. Yeah. That's not a big deal. It'll right. be corrected next lap. Uh, Brett Cruz is going out. Look. <laughs> I don't know what's that all about? He's, he's going to go and set the fastest lap. You watch. So he's, he's he's either going back to the pits or he's trying to go out there for some reason for some technical points thing. I don't really know. Well, he'll get points if he, ca if he yeah, finishes if the he race. if he finishes the race. So maybe he's just trying That's to do exactly that. That's exactly what he's doing. Smart move by the Nitro Motorsports team and Brent Cruz because if he does finish the race, crosses the line and takes the checkered flag, he will pick up points. Very smart move. There is Merrill, no problems there. And in fact, he's as close to Zillage as he's been in the last half hour at least. And as they cross the line again, the exact gap is what, half a second. So here comes Merrill and Zilic under pressure again. So at this point in the race, the cars, they've burnt off a lot of fuel, and if you save your tires correctly, you're gonna have a really fast race car. So right now, Connor and Thomas are both pushing as hard as they can. Thomas is just trying to close that gap, and obviously Zilic is just trying to keep pulling away, but it'll be uh, an exciting end for the uh, for the win for this race. Well, 158, a one, uh, a one minute 50.8 by Zilic and a 151.3 by Merrill. You can see from overhead where the gap is, and they're pulling away from third place turn. Zillage car just looks like it puts the power down and gets through the middle of the turn out very well compared to other cars, and I notice this at other races that I've done. So, whatever he's able to do and be able to do that, and he's done such a great job on the suspension of the car, I'm going to gather because I noticed it before, like I said, it's, it, there's a visual difference. So, I mean, yeah, when your seat's in the butt uh, of, the, of the race car, then it's a huge difference. Boris said has come in with that damaged front left of his 83 three-dimensional services car. Uh, so he will be out of this race and not finishing. Meanwhile, Merrill bouncing over the curves and almost getting a little too far. They're trying to repair him, get him out there, get him to finish the race if they can. They're going to pull the hood off. Come on, there you go. I love Trans Am. <laughs> off you go. Just a flesh wound, as Monty yeah. Python would say. We can keep going. Ah, no! Oh, out goes Barry Bowes. Bowes in the 32 car looks okay and he's got it under power but he's trying to get it in reverse and trying to get it out of harm's way or at least yeah, back on track he looks he's like it's difficult to getting it in gear obviously isn't it yeah. yeah with these dog box transmissions i don't really know why but they're hard to get into reverse so sometimes they're just picky and they just refuse to go in so i mean some things you can try are putting the clutch in and then trying to wiggle it around, put it into first gear, then reverse, trying to row through the gears while you're stopped to get into reverse. But that's his uh, his goal right now for this race is to get that thing into reverse. Well, it looks like he got it going. gear and he stole oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, well, yeah, I was so about to say, we could be back time. under caution. There we go. There 
you go. Ah, he's got it forward, going. spin it around, oh, and away go. you go. Oh, so it seemed like he wasn't trying to necessarily get into reverse. Maybe it's just a transmission issue because he couldn't get into any gear, it seems. Yeah, maybe oh, that's we're on board with Barry. Let's see what happens. Oh, it's old. Yeah, it's at uh, Customer Bank. Yeah, back end goes around. So as you mentioned, is it a transmission issue or just not have the balance of yeah, the car maybe, right maybe in the back he had end the brake back The brake bias could be incorrect. There could be a transmission issue, a differential issue. There could be a lot of different things. Or he could have just lost the rear. So the uh, fuel load and changing the balance of the car, do you guys change the brake balance as the race goes on? Yeah, so as the brake goes forward, you move your brake bias forward because you're losing weight off the rear so you can use more front brake. And if you don't do that, you're going to start uh, tail wagging on the brake. So maybe he just forgot to uh, turn that thing a little bit forward and had the rear brake bias incorrect. Now, we've just worked out, we think, that if um, Brett Cruz um, will, will remain to be seen what he does pick up, but we think he's going to carry a 45-point cushion in Dakota, which is nice, but it's not, you know, it's not something to breathe easy about. Yeah, I mean, 45 points is really not that much. This series is pretty, I don't know, they give away a lot of points. So, yeah. I mean, if you win the race... You can score over 100. Yeah, you can score a lot of points. So, I mean, 100 or 45 points, of the difference is, is easily scorable in one race. Yeah. So, Connor Zilic, though, on his way on the penultimate lap. And Mosak, I think, has done the business very, very good. Uh, and I think he's going to pick up the uh, cool move of the day for sure because he has gone from the back as the white flag waves for Connor Zilic who is about to make history folks he is about to become not only one of the youngest drivers in Trans Am and a superstar for Chevrolet in the future where will GM put him but boy is he the poster boy today and most of this season he won yesterday from the pole, and he won it by a country mile. He then stepped into the TA2 car straight after winning that race to qualify pole for this race in TA2. Brett Cruz back in the pits again, or back out again, I'm not sure, we'll keep an eye. But uh, this has been sensational by Connor Zilic. Yeah, I also think Nathan Hearn's also done a really good job. He moved that car up from 6th or 7th on the grid to 3rd. And uh, he's, it seems like he just hasn't quite at the pace of the seven car, but besides that, he's been right on with the uh, the rest of the guys. So really good job by him and the whole Stevens Miller Cube 3 racing team. Yep. And as I want to confirm, that will mean if he does finish this lap, he will be the first man in history to do both and win of a weekend, both the TA and TA2. It's been a sensational weekend. One, four the memory books and one for his home track he lives just a few miles down the road from here and i think his friends and family will celebrate with him a former world car champion and now makes a little bit of trans am history trans am the longest road racing series in america we've been racing trans am since 66 but we've never had a phenom this young this fast and this brilliant in one weekend We've got one now, and he's with silver hair and the number seven. Connor Zilic marches on into the future of racing in America by taking the checkered flag at Virginia International Raceway with a superb, immaculate weekend of victory. Absolutely superb. Following him home in second place will be Thomas Merrill, who will help keep his championship alive with that podium. Nathan Hurt takes a valiant podium and we will take a short break and we'll be back with more very soon. Well, Silver Hair, absolutely delighted. Absolutely delighted with that. And well, they will be. Well, well, they should be. It's been a tough year. They've had, you know, they've had a few controversies, but a few fantastic moments coming from the back to the front. But all through it, Connor Zilic has been metronomically good. It's been amazing just in the little bit that I've watched him. He's almost like a robot. And as you know, you have to turn around and do that. You're mechanical in your sense of driving a race car, hitting all your points, and making sure that you're doing the same thing every time. And a lot of that is seen by how consistent your laps are, and he's done that. Yeah, I mean, really consistent. I mean, you look at his lap times, and they're all like essentially the same. I mean, his average lap time that he's running is faster than most of these guys' best laps. So, I mean, just really impressive, really consistent. He's got that car working for him, and... Uh, Kudos to that whole silver, tear, silver hair. And yeah, that yeah. shout out to Morris and Laura uh, Hull, who, of course, live just three miles down the road. This is their home track. This is where they wanted to win. They were very, very uh, accommodating to let 
Connor race. And, you know, that's a risk because, you know, uh, he's fighting for the best position he can uh, in TA2. And to let him race in TA, you never know what's going to happen over 100 yeah. miles. He'd never raced one of those before. Uh, but they gracefully uh, put him in the Showtime car and allowed him to race with... Um, Justin Marks, but it turned out to be a great story, and this will be the highlight of Silver Hair Racing's uh, young uh, effort at Trans Am, and it's been quite a brilliant weekend for he and the team, and I think uh, Morris and Laura can rest safe tonight that this has been almost the perfect weekend. So then, Connor Zilic making his way to Victory Circle, and we will hear from him down there with Ben Sissel, I'm sure. Thomas Farrell does all he can and take second place, a brilliant second place, I may add. Brent Cruz will keep fighting. We think he's got a 45-point lead uh, going into Cota, and that's not a great cushion, but it's not bad. Nathan Hearn, of course, in third. Welcome back to Map TV's coverage of Trans Am here, and what a great race that has been. And don't forget, you can see the highlights again Thursday night on Map TV where we do it all again. We'll show you both TA and TA2. And I think the Zillage family might tune into that because they won both races with Connor Zillage. A brilliant run of form for him. And uh, we kind of knew when he arrived and popped out here at VIR not that long ago as a 16-year-old and took the pole uh, in his first ever Trans Am race that this was something special. You know, and just to have that youth and uh, along with them that's sitting beside us right now, that means such a possibility for all these young drivers because there's so much opportunity out there, not only in the single-seater, but especially, obviously, in the sedan racing and NASCAR with all the different classes. But this seems to like is now a destination for everybody that's thinking about NASCAR to get into these Trans Am cars because it offers you almost likeness of what you guys are looking for in NASCAR. Yeah, I mean, I, I've heard from a lot of NASCAR drivers that these cars actually drive very similar to the cup cars. So, I mean, this is a great feeder series. I mean, all of the NASCAR teams are learning that this is where you want to find your drivers. I mean, for the road courses, this is like the best you can get to prepare for NASCAR. So, What's I mean, your ambition? My ambition? I mean, I really want to do anything driving related. So NASCAR, IMSA, really anything. Open wheel, I would drive anything. I'm really focused on IMSA. I love the IMSA cars, but um, really anything. Anything that any option I get, I would so, take. Sounds like you need to go to the next three uh, NASCAR races before you come to Coda and yeah. <laughs> strap in again. There is Connor Zilich. Let's hear from him. Ben Sissel will be there with the mic. Thank you, Jonathan. I'm here with Connor Zilich. I would consider this a clean sweep for the weekend. You win by a huge margin in TA. You had kind of a late restart. You had to be nervous knowing that the uh, champion from last year is right behind you. But, man, how much fun was that? Yeah, it was uh, more stressful than it might have looked on TV. But, uh, you know, I, I wasn't really sure when Merrill on that last restart was kind of hanging with me. I was like, man, I got to I gotta figure something out and uh, find a little speed somewhere. So, uh, you know, those last few laps there, I just made sure that I, I hit my marks and, and did what I needed to do. I had a really good race car. All my Silver Hair Racing guys have worked so hard to uh, bring fast cars every week we go to the track. And uh, it's showing now. We've been the fastest car the last few races now. And, um, you know, I'm doing my job to capitalize on that and, and do my best when I'm out on the track. But, um, you know, it wouldn't be possible without all these guys, Jeff. Jeff Jr., uh, all the other ones, thank Thanks, you. Jeff. Good job, man. For a good race. Um, you know, all the guys that, that work hard for, um, you know, this. This is what they work hard for, and I'm glad I was able to get them to win. Nice. Congratulations. Nice job, Connor. Let me come and talk to Merrill. Hey, Merrill, last year's TA2 Series champion. Great run out there. You're still in contention for the championship. So did you know that? Last time you didn't know that. Did you know that this time? <laughs> Well, no, it's funny. I just saw uh, John Clagg enough to get out of the car, and he goes, hey, this looks familiar. <laughs> so 45 points out of first place going into Coda. So, you know, we, uh, no one knows better than me anything can happen, right? And uh, I'm so proud of this uh, HP Tuners Bandit Cope crew um, for sticking with it. Uh, I think tenacity is our brand, really. I mean, we, we're always there no matter what, and uh, I can't wait to get to Austin. Nice. I love it. Nathan Hearn, really hard fought third place. Connor Mosak, I'm sure, coming from the last to, I think, fifth place. I'm sure he's going to be the cool shirt, a move of the race. But, Jonathan, I'm going to send it back up to you in the booth. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, great words from our top man there, Connor Zillich, and obviously Thomas Merrill, uh, as always, the uh, epitome of a great sportsman, uh, uh, greeting him. And so, well done to him. Got last thoughts from you guys? 
I think really for me, it just it tells you how much you have to concentrate and make sure the car works well and you have no mistakes and there's no mechanicals and the championship's on the line at Coda. What about you, Evan? What's your thoughts? I mean, I think it was a great race. I mean, you showed, like, the consistency, the great car from, uh, from Connor Zilich, and then you had the perseverance of Merrill, and then he obviously didn't have any mechanical issues. All the mechanical issues that were surrounded by this race really made it interesting. So, I mean, Nathan Hearn, Q3 Racing, they did a great job, too, just keeping it consistent, staying out of trouble, keeping the nose clean. So, I mean, I think it was a really great race. And then Connor Mosak also fighting from the back to fourth or fifth position. That was really impressive, too. Well, that's why he is our cool move of the weekend and the day, because Connor Mosak going right from the back. And remember, he was honoring Sherry Pollock's legacy. She died of ovarian cancer just a few days ago, so he purposely left his Xfinity race last night and came back here to honor her and the Sherry Strong Orc. And he's done it valiantly by winning our cool suit, cool move of the day by going from the back all the way up to a brilliant result by him. Well done to Conor Mosak in the number eight. Well done to Scott Legacy and the team. Sherry Long and Sherry Pollock's legacy will go on. Sherry Strong. Cool shirt systems, cool of the race. Well done. So let's take a look at some of the highlights. Boy, we've got about an hour of those. <laughs> but uh, it really did have everything. And we got off underway with Zilic leading the field. Then we got into incidents. And uh, the first major one was Rafa Matos, still in contention coming into this, but uh, not the way he wanted to finish his day. But how about this? Brent Cruz all into the tyre wall. Likewise, Tyler Casera. That changed everything again. Jay Buford going off. He started second. He ended up in the tyre barriers. He too would go out. Austin Green got into a bit of a flurry as well, damage to the car. Then, uh, obviously, another incident. Misha Goikberg taking out uh, Bad Moffitt. But it was Zillage all the way. What a great release for him. So then, as we bring our Map TV viewers back to the scene of what has been a fantastic weekend at VIR, in all categories, I may add. But the Trans Am, absolutely top draw. Uh, VIR always throws up great racing. My thanks to Evan Slater. If you have anything in your pocket or you want to see another 17-year-old just as good as Connor Zilic, put some money behind Evan Slater. Scott Goodyear, I'm sure, would agree. Uh, but let's head down now to Ben Sissel, who is getting ready to do the podium. Virginia International Raceway, let's hear you. Come on now, get loud. You just witnessed a little bit of history there. The Big Machine Vodka, Spike Coolers, TA2 Series. Look at it. Come on up here, Eric. Get loud. Get some Bennett Bridge Hall trucks here. Come on now, get loud. Oh, oh, right off the head. Look at that. That was a little bit of a ricochet. We've got some on the shoulders back here, too. All right, I need you guys to stay with that kind of energy here, okay? Can we do that? We've got a lot more to throw out. So, in Pro-Am and Masters, first place in that beautiful number 33 car, where is William Moore? Give it up for William Moore, ladies and gentlemen. Bill Moore. Nice job. Come on up to the top step, Bill. Let's have a hand for Kim McCullough with our trophy presentation, ladies and gentlemen. So, Masters, Pro-Am, beautiful day at Virginia International Raceway. Fantastic crowd. Does it get any better than this? No, it was a fantastic race. Everybody had a lot of fun out there, and uh, hats off to my crew. We really thrashed yesterday. We blew a clutch. We had a rear end problem, so we, we had no rest last night. <laughs> oh, nice. I love that. Anybody you want to thank? Well, I want to th thank the crew, Jeff and uh, Don over there. They did a great job this weekend. Nice. I love it. All right, Bill, hold that up high. Let's hear it, ladies and gentlemen. William Moore, Pro-Am Masters, Virginia International Raceway. Keep it up, Virginia. I like this crowd. Very nice. Yeah, don't go too far. You got a hat, too. One more time, Bill Moore, Pro-Am Masters. Yeah. All right, Bill, thank you so much. Congratulations. The big
Big Machine Vodka Spike Coolers, TA2 Series. Did you guys appreciate and enjoy the race today? That was quite a race. Lots of drama out there. We thought the championship might get decided today, but in fact, it goes on to the next round, which makes things even more interesting. In third place, one of our young guns, kind of a regular here on the podium with the TA2 series, all the way from Australia, ladies and gentlemen, give it up, Nathan Hearn. Cube 3 SMR has never raced here before and probably had the least amount of laps here starting today. Nathan, great run. Last year's TA2 Series champion, and it got decided on the last turn of the last race last year at Coda. Still the one of the only two drivers still in contention for this year's championship. Let's hear it, Thomas Merrill Bennett. Mike Coke race cars, HP tuners, TA2 series car. And then ladies and gentlemen, we saw him win yesterday in the TA class in his first time in a TA race. Then we saw him be the class of the field in the Big Machine Vodka Spike Coolers TA2 series. The silver hair, Carter Bank and Trust, number seven Chevrolet Camaro, Connor Zilich, ladies and gentlemen, get loud. A clean sweep for Connor Zilich. Look at that. That's got to feel good. I love it. Well, Nathan Hearn, man, uh, you, we were speaking just, what, probably an hour and a half ago, and you, you were a little bit dissatisfied with how many laps you got around this track, but, man, you really showed the talent that you have. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, Ben. It's, um, yeah, I mean, it's been a hard year, obviously, rocking up to every track for the first time, and Virginia, that was very hairy of a track to learn. So, uh, but uh, during the race, obviously, I had some pretty good company in, in Connor Zilich and, and Tom Merrill, and uh, following them along, I got to pick up a few pointers. So, uh, but that uh, was awesome. And a big thank you to How uh, Racing, Steve's Miller Racing, and Q3 Racing for um, all the support. It's, it's, yeah, it's been a good year. The podium's starting to come more consistently. So, um, next year, I think we'll come back and uh, hopefully be stepping on that one. Nice, I love it. Let's hear it, ladies and gentlemen. Nathan Hearn, third place. Nick, Cube 3, thank you so much. Merrill, somehow, I don't know how you do it, but you just know how to just hang on to a championship by your fingernails. And uh, hopefully Bowser and your team were telling you you're still in this thing. How was it out there? Oh, it was awesome. I always love racing here in Virginia. Uh, really, really fun racetrack. And uh, wish we got more green flag laps, but uh, otherwise it's all good. So, um, yeah, big thanks to the uh, the Bennett uh, Bridge Hall HP Tuners Go crew for always giving me a solid car. Not ever giving up. You know, we've had a lot of ups and downs this year, but we got to make the fight for the championship interesting somehow, right? So <laughs> maybe next year we'll work on a, a, a lower drama season. But uh, big congratulations to Connor and the Silver Hair team. You guys are in the class field today. Well done. Uh, congratulations for a good home victory. Well done. Nice. Thomas Merrill, ladies and gentlemen. Thomas, we spoke a couple years ago when this Young Guns thing was happening, and you were like, what a great idea. This is so awesome. You still have that same opinion? <laughs> Depends on the day, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, It's been really fun to get to know these kids and work with them and coach some of them and, and watch their, their careers grow, and obviously Connor's the star of the future. I don't think anyone doubts that, so it'll be interesting to see what he can do. Nice. I love it. Thomas Merrill, ladies and gentlemen, last year's champion. Could be the 2023 champion. You never know. we got to stay tuned for Circuit of the Americas. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I keep saying this, but remember this day that you probably afterwards got Connor Zilish's autograph because we are going to be talking about this man for a long time coming, really showing us the talent. Connor, unbelievable weekend. Clean sweep. Nice job. Take the mic from me. Tell us about your weekend. Yeah, first of all, I'm glad that uh, Tyler and Brenner are okay. That was a scary-looking wreck down at the end of the back straightaway. So... Uh, thankful to see them walk away from that and, and be okay. That's obviously the most important thing. Um, second of all, thank you to my whole entire team, Silver Hair Racing. They've uh, worked so hard to, to give me fast cars every week we come to the track, and it showed the last few times we've we've been here. So uh, it means a lot to be racing for this team. Maurice and Laura Hole, they uh, gave me this opportunity to come out here and race. My family for uh, giving me this chance. My mom and dad always support me the most that they can. And, um, you know, Carter Bank and Trust for coming on the car this weekend, local company for... Uh, you know, helping us out and, and helping us get to the track. And 
Um, you know, it just means a lot to be standing up here for, I think, the fifth or sixth time this year. I don't even know. Um, but but it's pretty special to have this good of a year and, um, you know, to end the year the way we have and, um, you know, go to Coda with a chance to win. We're out of the championship hunt, so we can't win the championship, but there's still a race to be won. So uh, we'll go there with that goal. And, um, you know, I can't ask for much better of a weekend winning both features and, and getting two poles. So, uh, yeah, you know, thank you to everyone and uh, see you at Coda. Nice. I love it. All right, you got some hats. Let's, let's see what kind of arms these guys have here. Who wants a hat? Beautiful Sunoco hat. Come on now. Throw that thing on. Okay, let's see what you got. We'll see a boomerang, Nathan Hearn. Yeah. <laughs> here we go, Nathan Hearn. Oh, it's a little bit of a boomerang. And fell short. Oh, you got some more stuff. Now, just right back here in this golf cart, ladies and gentlemen, Connie. The proprietor of the track. Everybody wave at Connie. Let's have a big round of applause for Connie. Connie, thank you so much. Beautiful track, but thank you so much for ordering this weather. I know that took some work. Beautiful weather. Connie and I home back there. The reason Virginia International Raceway exists. All right, hold up those trophies, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get loud. Nathan Hearn, Thomas Merrill, Connor Zillich, the Big Machine Vodka Spike Coolers TA2 Series. That was quite a show here this weekend, gentlemen. And Connie, the whole VIR staff, crew, Kerrigan, everybody that put in the great work, and the corner workers. How about a round of applause for them, too, ladies and gentlemen? Unbelievable. But come on, Virginia, get loud. Nathan Hearn, Thomas Merrill, Connor Zillage. Uh-oh. Okay, so just so you know, he gets water. The rest of them get champagne. Connor Zillich gets water. <laughs> Thomas is not waiting. Sorry, Chris. Look at him. He can barely spray it. Connor, I'm sorry. But you've, you've still got four years before we can legally give you champagne. I want something that'll spray. Yeah, we, we need to get him like a seltzer sprayer or something. Come on, Virginia, get loud one more time. Nathan Hearn, Thomas Merrill, Connor Zillich. Nice job. Connor, don't go too far. Don't go too far. Nathan, nice job. Yeah, yeah. So, our Omo Legato, fastest lap, the Omo Legato watch. Where is the watch? I just saw him check his... Uh, Sorry, I went out of order because he, he asked me. What are you going to do when a champion asks you, you know? Hold that up. Let's hear it one more time. Connor Zillich for the fastest lap. Omo Legato watch. Don't drop it this time. It, it is a new one. Yeah, it is a new one. Nice new one. Nice. Connor Zillich, congratulations, man. And then, ladies and gentlemen, another Connor. And the uh, grid was bookended by two Connors, starting in last place because he was racing yesterday in the Xfinity race. He's been racing here for the last two years. His first Trans Am start was here at Virginia International Raceway a few seasons ago. But coming all the way from 34th to, I believe, 5th. Is that correct? He finished 5th? He's not sure. Anybody? 6th? Finishing 6th. Team SLR M1. Let's hear it. Connor Mosak, the cool shirt, cool move of the race for working his way all the way up from 34th to 6th. Come on up here, Connor. Because uh, I know last night's race, you were racing for a great thing with Sherry. And then today, the same thing. And welcome back to the series, man. We've been loving watching you in the Xfinity Series and ARCA. But tell us who you're racing for today. Yeah, it's, it's an honor for us to represent the Sherry Strong Foundation and, and honor Sherry Pollock's legacy in, in the sport of racing and in NASCAR. So just an honor for me to be able to do that in the Xfinity race yesterday and then again today. But um, just big thanks to my team, Scott Legacy Racing. We brought a really good car. It just took us a little bit too long to get going. So um, I think we, we learned some stuff for sure. Uh, but had a lot of fun coming from the back and just uh, happy we could finish uh, near the front and uh, just wish we had some, some more laps there. Perfect. I love it. Let's hear it. Connor Mosack, ladies and gentlemen. He just loves VIR so much, he had to race here again. How about that? Where is that? Uh, we good? All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that does it for the Trans Am Series presented by Pirelli here at Virginia International Raceway. 
I'm going to put the pressure on Connie and say we will be back here next year around the same time. So make sure you stay tuned. Thank you guys so much for coming out. And I'm going to send it back up to the booth to Jonathan Green. And thank you guys so much for coming out. Well, thank you, Ben Sissel. And thank you to our podium top three and winners of the cool suit in Connor Mosack. What a weekend. Really had everything. And truly was a fantastic venue. Confirmation of the result then. Connor Zillage makes history for silver hair racing at home for Chevrolet and the Camaro taking victory ahead of Thomas Merrill, the current champion and still in the hunt for another championship. Nathan Hearn takes a brilliant third place, the Australian for Cube 3 Berryman and of course Joe Miller, um, Miller Racing and Berryman, well done to him. Annunciata fourth, McMacavern in fifth, Connor Mosack from the back to the sixth place and that's why he gets the cool suit move of the year of the uh, weekend may have been the lead the, the year Caleb Bacon takes seventh Misha Koikberg eighth Darren Mock in ninth and Adrian Lostowski rounding out the top ten and we look a little further down Pro Chuck Sheehan Leesfield good to see Chris Leesfield back in Trans Am and a 13th place for him Cale Phillips takes 14th Ty Young 15th Jim Gallagher 16th David Hodge making his debut for fast auto racing and he does a good job in 17th. Abate, 18th. Luke Rumberg in 19th. And Lee Saunders, his very first ever TA2 race. And he finishes in the top 20. Well done to him. William Moore takes 21st. Al Rowland, 22nd. Then it's Bose, Moffitt, Sed Jr. And these are the guys that didn't make it to the end. Austin Green, Andretti, Sarge, 28th. Jay Buford, 29th. And Matt Gray, 30th position. And finally, Patrick Paul retired, as you saw, a big crash for Brent Cruz. And likewise, Rafa Matos and Tyler Casera involved in that tyre wall incident at the uh, beginning of the race. But that's how it all finished, and it really was a big machine vodka spike coolers cracking TA2 race. Doesn't get much better than that. So then, now we look ahead. Because, of course, the season has one more hurrah. Because we will be bringing you, first of all, highlights of the Big Machine Vodka Spike Coolers TA2 series on Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, on the 12th of October. And then, of course, following that is TA at 9 p.m. Eastern. But that's it for this weekend. Join us next time out from Coda. I'm Jonathan Green. Until next time, from all of the Greenlight and the rest of the crew, bye-bye for now. For low to medium volume production parts and full assemblies, utilizing the latest manufacturing technology and automation, which 3D continually invest in, we are able to deliver high quality parts rather than empty promises. 3D takes on the jobs our competitors simply can't. The Three Dimensional Services Group loves the challenge. Our team is your team. The Three Dimensional Services Group, prototype, production, proven. Hungry for SVRA action? Well, the best way to enjoy classic auto racing is with a delicious classic from Mission Foods. Green flag your race-watching snacks with Mission's mouth-watering race day recipes. Try some of our tasty tacos, piled high nachos, fresh chips with guac, and more. So gear up your ride and fuel up those stomachs with delicious Mission Foods. Now that's too fast, too tasty. I'm Richard Petty, and you might say I've had a fairly successful driving career. And you know the secret of my success? Having a good support team around me when I need it. Whether you're a route driver, over-the-road trucker, or you're interested in driving special purpose vehicles, Clean Harbors is the kind of place where you can build a long driving career. Do yourself a favor. Give Clean Harbors a call. 